All right. Thank you. Thank you, Cold Blood, for that. I swear, I, I was doing some work over the weekend, and I'm glad you caught that, Cold Blood. I should have double checked that. I was doing some work over the weekend. As you can see, we got some, um, some new stuff down there in the uh, chat. He said, Janky Streamer Buddhist Man. Facts, bro. Uh, Cold Blood, it's Cold Blood's fault. I'm going to blame him. He's been whipping me to work. <laughs> He's been treating me like, like Kunta Kinte. Uh, treat me like Amistad. Help us, free us. You know what I'm saying? It, and um, I've been trying to work on the stream labels uh, for this show. And I, I had to copy and paste some things. And I always forget with OBS. When you mute on OBS, or maybe it's just my OBS, when the, the, the moment you mute the mic on OBS, you gotta check it. Cause even if you unmute it, sometimes it'll mute right back. So you gotta watch it. Like at times I, when we go live, I'll tell Cold Blood to remind me if I forget, because I'll just hit it, it'll unmute and I think I'm good. And then next thing you know, we're muted. So I thought I had fixed that Saturday night when I was last working on this, but of course, OBS is going to OBS. Thank God. Cold blood caught that at the beginning. Sean, you were in the discord. Um, did you hear me while you were in the discord? Cause we were testing that out this weekend too. And that should be working. That's why we have it as an option. Hopefully it's working. Cold blood says you owe it to the damn people. Owe it to the people. Damn it. Oh, you're talking about the, the label streams. Yeah, Sean, let me know if you can hear me in here while you're on the stage. Cause should work hopefully it does but with that said we have a we have we have a decent show for you today beyond decent what am i talking about we have a hell of a show for you um because we'll be talking about a bunch of crazy conversations that are happening on the internet one hell of a good interview and um a reality check for those that don't want to believe that it's the end of an era it's it, it's truly the end of an era there's a new chapter being written um i think some people are still having a hard time coping with that uh, he said he didn't hear anything <sighs> okay we're gonna get that fixed i gotta talk to lo-fi and see what that's all about um yeah bear with us we, we're we're working on a discord it's a very ambitious discord i was talking to cold blood um it's very ambitious in nature i just think that we need to do some more testing so i'm gonna get back with lo-fi we're gonna do some more testing i just i you know it's it's, it's frustrating but we're, we're gonna you know collectively as a group we probably should have done some more testing um, of different features so we're going to thoroughly do that this and once we get that taken care of the discord is going to be super pop and it's already super popping now but it's elements like this that you know you know we got to make sure that we we have it all together so we're working on that but thank you for that we did put the discord link in there but you guys still can't hear so we'll fix that we'll figure that one out that being said still check us out on youtube check us out on kick um, we are live on kick. We are live on YouTube. As a matter of fact, let me go to the kick. Yep. We're kicking on kick. <laughs> we are kicking on kick. And let me do this so I can pull up the YouTube comments while everybody is filling in. Hold on one second. Um, okay. We got the link right here and then let's get YouTube uppy of chat. There we go right there. So as you guys are cursing me out or doing whatever you like to do i can put it up on the screen and i can show the youtube police the abuse that i go through you know what i mean okay that's wrong that's not even the right link uh, all right so when i hit copy you're supposed to copy the link there you go let's see if let's see if you did it this time okay let's try it again all right delete and there you go all right okay add source connect okay now we got the chats up in there um 
let's do this let's open this up so we at least can do the socials there we go all right so we got everybody in there all right cool cool so what i want to do is we're going to talk about three things we're going to talk about the whoops interview that the people over at um the what up what's up podcast had it was a hell of an interview if you haven't heard it i definitely recommend that after this stream that you go check it out we're going to also talk about xbox xbox games to um playstation and the secret development defrosted windows they said (laughs) and what that means because people are speculating about games and other people are hopping in and saying shit like no these games ain't never coming and shit like that and then lastly we're going to talk about the playstation 5 pro it's it's one of the biggest things that i am in heavy anticipation on but it's one of my least favorite things to talk about i'll explain all that shortly but do us a huge favor um hit that like share this out let everybody know that we are live we really appreciate it we got a big show for you today okay so cold blood we didn't get a chance to rap i didn't know if you were planning on doing a stream hold on but if you are let me know we'll we'll, we'll chat about that because um there could be a stream later today there's there's a there's things behind the scenes these are just one of those days y'all where you know we're going to still provide some content but um uh we're going to take a large chunk of time today to try to fix these things and get these things right for you the discord the members perks these uh notifications they take um hours upon hours upon hours to do usually people um hire people to do this but i i get the luxury of doing it myself (laughs) so it's a lot of fun so we'll see we'll get to the bottom of it we'll start fixing some things and hopefully by the end of this week all this stuff will be resolved that being said i want to pay the bills and do a couple of things real quick um here let's go here why is that okay that should be last there we go and this should be first i want to remind everybody about our big giveaway our big giveaway um includes 70 dollars usd um in celebration of the final fantasy 7 rebirth launch on playstation 5 um it just went up a metacritic score i've never i haven't seen that cold blood admit I haven't, I haven't seen that in a long time that it goes up you'll usually see a game go down you know after all the scores come in um but it it, it went up um it's 93 now i think definitely worth checking out um cold blood has been gracing us on this channel with streams every day of the show i mean of the of the game he's doing a full walkthrough i mean my man has been busting it yeah i mean so definitely check out his streams and um if you do check out cold blood streams two things are going to happen you're going to you know based upon certain things you'll be able to enter into this giveaway right here let me do this while we're here uh let me put enter our final fantasy final fantasy 7 rebirth okay enter our final fantasy 7 rebirth 70 dollar usd giveaway um here it goes there you go there goes the link right there pin the message all right so if you enter the giveaway um you will get access over to an opportunity to 170 usd again the rules of the giveaway are you got to follow this channel 
You got to follow MM2K Gaming News. You got to join our Discord. Links to all those are in the giveaway. All right. Or in the, in the tweet for the giveaway. Then once you do all three of those things, you got to watch a stream. You got to watch a stream of Cold Blood doing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. If you're part of the Discord, you'll get a notification when the streams are going live. And sometime during that stream, he's going to put a passcode out. That passcode is to be taken back to the Discord and put in our in our giveaway thread um, within the Discord. So if you go to the giveaways channel, you'll see the thread. It's pinned, or you could just get a hit the direct link that's in the tweet as well. It'll take you to that giveaway thread. Now, the thing is, is that we're not going to select a winner for this giveaway until we get 50 participants. Once we get 50 participants, then we will do the giveaway. Um, so it's in your best interest to share this out. Let people know that this giveaway exists, because if you do that, not only will we get entrance faster, but if you specifically share this out and show us proof that you shared this out, you'll get a bonus entry. So you can get up to two entries doing this and give yourself a leg up on everybody else. So definitely check this out. We got the link pinned here in the chat. Check it out and good luck to all of our entrants. Okay. Um, Oh, don't want to show you guys that yet. That's a little bit too premature. Here is something I did want to show you. That's why that was first. Okay, you see this profile, MM2K Gaming Network? That is our new, that is the official Twitter page for the MM2K Gaming Channel's content. So whenever we go live and stuff like that, you will see that there. I'm going to put that so, so you guys are where MM2K gaming network twitter um and what i need to do is i need to go to kick thank you for those that are watching over on kick mm2k 2k gaming network twitter put that over there and then also um join our giveaway of 70 dollar usd psn credit i keep forgetting about our people over at kick uh well, let's see here copy all right there you go all right thank you very much thank you very much okay no further ado let's get on to the show um let's go back here in game video okay first let's talk about sean layton sean layton did a hell of an interview with uh, jay barry and persona if y'all don't know them, then you better know, especially if you're a PlayStation gamer, like these guys, um, these guys are the epitome of gamers that are on Twitter. They're not out here for the drama and all that other stuff. I mean, they'll, they, they, they've had conversations here and there where, you know, there, there may be, there may have been drama circulating around them momentarily, you know, but they, they don't get embedded in the drama. And, and I think that's any of us. I don't think anybody's hands are clean as far as drama. I was watching. Um, Iron Lord's podcast, which I normally don't do. And, and nothing against them. Um, that podcast has a demographic. I'm, I'm not part of it. Um, but I like Lord Cognito. I really like him. He's 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 a stand-up guy. I don't you know I don't agree with any of his gaming takes, but I think he's a stand-up guy. He, he, he's a he's a consummate professional. I really do like him, and I and I do um, think he's well deserving of his ascension 
in 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 the space you know um again do i do i sometimes roll my eyes at some of his takes sure but whatever you know people i'm pretty sure people do the same thing with me um but but i like the job that he does hosting in you know the how he tries to stay out of the fray i appreciate that too um i can't help it <laughs> you know what i'm saying like if i hear bullshit i'm on it i'm on it like a fly and, I, and this but i'm swatting it i'm i'm yeah I, I can't i can't handle misinformation deliberate misinformation and people being deceived we all make mistakes i make mistakes all the time but if you're deliberately trying to deceive people because you want them to 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 like what you like I have a serious problem with that. I'm, I'm not as kind or as courteous or as professional as him. Um, but I was watching a show that I normally don't watch because there was something, you know, happening in the streets with with, with some of the, the, the panel members and some other content creator. Mm. And I thought it was interesting because even though I think they were giving this situation too much energy, I actually agreed with their takes on the situation. Um, so I, I was watching it, you know, but Cognito tried to divert from the drama as a consummate professional and, and Jay Barry and, and persona, they, they do the same thing on the PlayStation side, and I think they're very successful at it. Um, they have, they brought on Sean Layton, right? And Sean Layton um, is the former head of SIE. So the role that Jim Ryan was in a few weeks ago, and the role that uh, Tataki has taken over as the interim SIE chair, um, that was Sean Layton's position. And before him, I believe it was, was it Jack Trenton? That was before him. Um, anyway, so he graced him again, came on a show and did an interview. And in that interview, they tackled a variety of things that I think are important to, to, to game. Gamers and gaming. Uh, the first thing that they tackled well, one of the things, I, I, I'm not going to say these are in chronological order, but the first thing that I want to address from that interview um, is first, second, and third party descriptions. And should we even be paying attention to that shit? Um, exclusive budgets, um, exclusives mattering, and then lastly, buying your games. Um, but before I get into that, I want to give them again one more kudos and say that I, I particularly like what Jay Bari and persona do because they are focused on gaming and it's not about you're an idiot you're an asshole you're a jerk this and that they're not getting into that shit people have tried to bait them with salt content and, and memes and shit like that and they're, they're above it all and they're seeing success because of it now they can create content and this is the hopes for us like we want content that come from the horse's mouth like i'm not going to sit there and brown nose an executive and, 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 and again i'm not saying that's what they're doing not at all but some people will brown nose an executive to get them on just to say we had so and so on right um but what i would want to do is like what what they're doing is getting people on having these direct conversations and getting the shit from the horse's mouth you know what i mean I know that sounded gross. To <laughs> you know I mean, if you want to get the shit from the horse's mouth, you know what I mean? But, you know, get this straight from the horse's mouth. That's why when we sat down, when we were doing our thing about Stadia, um, with the interviews and stuff like that, we sat down with the devs. Like, I could have just sat there and rambled on and on and on and on for hours, but at some point in time, we said, fuck what you heard, we're going to sit down with the devs. It's a lot of times the devs had nice stuff to say about Stadia. A lot of times they didn't. But we, you're going to hear it from the devs' mouth. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's what Jay Barry and Persona did. And uh, these are the things that I want to cover specifically from that interview. So the first thing I want to talk about is first, second, and third party. All right. 
there, this has become a big debate because I saw it out on Twitter where people were like, you know, first, second, and third party. Um, you know, MLB The Show isn't first party or second party and all this other stuff. So let, let me show you guys this. Uh, Sean Layton, in regards to that, he says PlayStation was never a first party plat driven platform. You look at Nintendo and Sega in the 90s, their first party output was the lion's share of the software market. You could publish on N64, but the top 10 games were always gonna be Nintendo games on there. PlayStation always began with a third party focus on the platform and business. First party isn't there to steal the market from Electronic Arts or Square. First party is there to grow the pie bigger. So what does that mean? I'm gonna show you guys a tweet that I had sent. What does that mean in layman's terms for the for the for the for the deaf dumb and 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 and, and silly in the back? Um here, here goes the tweet right here that I had. Put that up there. Excuse me. It says exactly in line with what I've been saying, PlayStation First Party is an ends to a means. Each game isn't designed to have a high attach rate. They are meant to generate system sellers for intended demo and collectively make box more attractive for main prize multi-plat play. What am I talking about? So you hear a lot of this stupid rhetoric out here. But there's 150 PlayStation with only $10 million worth sold. <laughs> That's it's a failure and flopped. The purpose of a third party game, like when EA goes and makes a game, the purpose that EA has is simply sell as many of those games as possible in as many places as possible. If they have a third party multiplied game that they are working on, that is their goal. It's as simple as that. So yes, when you look at, um, when you look at that, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make sure that you understand that, hey, we want as many of these games sold across multiple platforms. That's simple, no simpler than that. When you have an exclusive, an exclusive game is simply, look, as a platform holder, I am trying to sell this $500 box. I'm trying to get this $500 box in as many homes as possible so when you do buy that game from EA, you buy it on our box. Because most people, most gamers, are only gonna have one unit in their house when it comes to these top tier console games. You're only gonna have one console in their house, right? So with that said, if most gamers are gonna only have one console in their house, and you're trying to fight for that lion's share because this box is expensive. You're asking someone to pay a whole bunch of money for a contraption that you're only going to buy two pieces of software on a year on average. Something has to distinguish that box. So here's how it works. Normally, the first three to four years of a console generation, not normally, I mean, well, yeah, for the most, yeah, normally, because there was one unicorn generation, but that's because things happen differently. And one company pretty much pulled out of even worrying about the console the last two years, and they started moving to the next one. But generally, how it works is the first three to four years determines who's going to win that, that generation, right? The first three to four years is unadulterated with hardcore gamers. Hardcore gamers make up the lion's share of uh, 
who buys consoles the first three to four years. So in, if, if the first three to four years determine who wins a console generation, if you're looking at precedent, and if those first three to four years are unadulterated with hardcore gamers, then what is it that you need? You need hardcore games to bring them aboard, right? Right. Now, hardcore gamers have different tastes. There are hardcore gamers that love a God of War. There are hardcore gamers that prefer Spider-Man. There are hardcore gamers that prefer, um, you know, a Final Fantasy. Like all gamers don't like all the same games. So certain games are going to hit. Let's just say if you we're talking about PlayStation's current 50 plus million PlayStation 5's 50 plus uh, million consoles, right? If I buy a PlayStation 5, you know, I in a certain 10 million might like God of War. Then Cold Blood in a certain other 10 million might like Final Fantasy. Then Sean in another certain 10 million might like Horizon. We don't always intermingle and, and cross pollinate and buy all the same games. But if Sony can successfully get 10 million of my gamers, then get 10 million of Cold Blood's gamers, then get 10 million of Sean's gamers and so on and so on, they've collectively created games that hit every target demo. So by the time the casual, the person that's gonna buy the EA game, by the time the casual comes onto the scene and they're ready to buy that platform, they're ready to move into the next generation, everywhere around them where they look, everybody's bought a PlayStation 5. The Final Fantasy guy bought one, the God of War guy bought one, the Horizon Forbidden West guy got one. The Spider-Man guy got one. The, the Gran Turismo guy got one. Everywhere you look. So all gamers do not cross pollinate and play everything. There are hardcore gamers that do do that, but you gotta remember that hardcore gamers like five to 10%, if even that of the gamer base. And everybody doesn't play everything. Like you'll have a hardcore gamer that say, you know what, Final Fantasy really ain't my jam. Not really a big fan of God of War. Nah, not too big on Horizon. Every gamer doesn't play everything. So certain games target certain demographics. Your job as the platform holder is to have something for every demographic. Like for instance, I was more of a Gears guy. I don't like Halo when I was an Xbox fan. Couldn't stand the shit. But Gears with his co-op, his third party, th third person co-op, I like third person games. I like third person shooter games. So again, Gears with his third person shooter aspects and its co-op aspects of it, that spoke to me. So they got me in my demographic. But with Halo, they got another demographic. Then the motherfucker signed an exclusive deal, timed the exclusive deal with Mass Effect. That's another demographic. Those are the nerds that at, at, at Sunday release smell like corn chips. You know what I'm saying? And they cosplay, right? Okay. Y'all remember Triumph the Comic Dog <laughs> used to make fun of them. You know what I mean? They're, they're all different demographics. Your job as a platform holder is to appeal to everybody. So even if you do appeal to, um, to each individual demographic and you do get some cross pollination, your job is to get 10, 15 million here, 10, 15 million here, and collectively bring them together and outperform the other console makers. So individually looking at first, second, third party, or looking at what game sold this much individually, is a fool's errand. As Sean Layton says, the, 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 the first party exclusive 
is not or the exclusive is not designed to sell as much as the ea game it is to make sure that i have the lion's share of people that will buy the ea game on my platform okay so understand that i think what happened last gen is that we started to see playstation do something that it hadn't done in previous gens outside of like gran turismo playstation started dropping bangers that was outselling multiplats that wasn't a typical opposite of like gran turismo they were dropping shit that when you look at the annual sales on PlayStation 4 alone, they were out, out selling multiplats. So you wet behind the ear, motherfuckers, saw that as in, oh, well then, you know, Sony must sell 15 to 20 million and they must, they must have profit margins that reach this. You are worrying about shit that is out of your element. That's not how this works. PlayStation just saw unprecedented saturation with their games because of how booming the PlayStation 4 was. But you don't need that type of saturation in order to have an, a successful exclusive. And trust me, 10 million is a success, period. It's a success. Now you may have some situations where platform holders, and I think this may have happened with the case of Spider-Man 2, platform holders may have thought their shit didn't stink. And instead of a successful 10 million, they was high on L LSD or something like that and thought that Spider-Man was gonna hit 20 million or some shit like that. Hence why they thought he was gonna sell 25 million consoles. That's idiotic and they woke the fuck back up but i don't think that not i don't think you, you just can't label something like 10 million sold especially when it costs you 315 million to make and you brought in at least 700 million like stop stop when they talk about profit margins that's investor shit right now the entire gaming industry is not attractive to investors the entire gaming industry is not attractive to investors so worrying about having an attractive profit margin is not something that's going to kill you especially right now in this climate if everything else around sony was booming like if there weren't any layoffs and sony was the only one doing layoffs and then they were the only ones with with profit margins that 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 you know if if amongst all this everybody was doing the exact opposite of sony their revenues weren't hitting then yeah but the whole gaming market sucks right now so none of it is attractive to investors they got to go through a correction phase so sony having lower than typical profit margins when their profit margins are affected by the yen um the, the the acquisitions that they made the cost of hardware and so much other that's a fool's errand worry about fucking games as a gamer you are not this is not some type of predictive litmus that you're grasping onto you're 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 trying to be stretch armstrong and reach for something that is not obtainable and i think uh, the misunderstanding of of the job of first party games for one and secondly misunderstanding like what first party second party and third party mean and what their importance are is another problem what do i mean by that too many times we're having this discussion around is it a first party game they only got they, they only got one first party game they only got two first party game da 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 as Sean Layton said in, in, in this excerpt, PlayStation was never a first party driven platform. PlayStation 4 was a unicorn. 
They had a great moment. They had fantastic moments. They'll probably have more fantastic moments. But the success of what PlayStation is doing isn't based off of that. The games are not only developed by PlayStation, they're funded by, not only developed by PlayStation first party, but they're funded by PlayStation and they own the IP. Like they have full control over this. Nobody else has the license. These are not licensed IPs. They control everything. All right, you did have a crazy year in 2017. But again, now, like I said, these were this is a unicorn for PlayStation. But when you look at the actual first party that people are talking about, because they're making a comparison to what, you know, Xbox's first party, let, let's show you what PlayStation actually had, even in the unicorn PlayStation 4 era. It isn't so grand, is it? Killzone, Shadowfall, Drive Club, Infamous, the Last Guardian, Uncharted 4, Horizon, God of War, Days Gone, and then even Miles Morales is questionable because that's that's a license they don't own. So even Miles Morales probably shouldn't be up there. It's like Sean Layton said, they are not known for delivering solely on their first party that's why i don't mind there being years where there's only like one first party triple a game now when there's none you know i'm like oh well what the what the flippity flap flap flippity flop is going on here but as we see here it's definitely a possibility look at 2015 But I think us worrying about first party, second party, whatever, you know, I would worry about PlayStation developed exclusives versus non PlayStation developed exclusives. SIE exclusives versus non SIE exclusives. That's what I would worry about. Full SIE exclusives. 
You can call them F F F FSC, full SIE exclusives, meaning they own the IP, they own the studio. How many full SIE exclusives are we getting? Not first party, sec, none of that shit. Is it a full SIE exclusives? How many non, non FSE games are we getting? That's, that's how I look at it. No more first party. That shit doesn't matter, man. Full SIE. Is it FSE full? F S I E S E exclusive E. Is it FSE or non FSE? I, I would like a year with at least one FSE. Because here's the thing. If we don't look at it that way, and we go with Insomniac and Spider-Man and, and the Wolverine games, I mean, that is a Sony developer, right? But even that developer is beholden to the license owner. To where they get to push aside Sony's expertise. And it's to the point now to where they're even saying, there's even grumblings that now, uh, even though Sony wants to put a little bit more guardrails on how much shit is thrown into these games for cost purposes, that Marvel's like, this is what they expect from here on out. I don't think people are looking at this properly. I truly don't think people are looking at this properly. I'm 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 concerned is it an FSE or non-FSE exclusive? If it's non-FSE, then you know, like a Rise of the Ronin, a Final Fantasy 7, you know, whatever, where PlayStation doesn't have full I don't want to say autonomy, it's not the right word, but full power control over it then anything could happen with those games because there are other parallels that are involved. But the game that I'm, the games that I truly want to see at least one a year of are the FSCs. And Sean Layton, I think does a fantastic job in helping people understand that their focus on first party, second party, third party is the, 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 it's silly that is that is terminology that's used for the studios when they're trying to determine who's developing the game going off of whether it's first party second party or third party letting you know who the studio is that's developing a game doesn't tell you the full story mlb the show sony in a million years would have never imagined that one of their um, studios would be developing a game for Xbox outside of like a live service game. I mean, do you consider MLB live service? Maybe you do whatever, but if Sony owned the MLB license, like if Sony owned major league baseball, believe you me, that shit would not be on fucking Xbox. Then I don't give a fuck how much they were getting in game pass that shit wouldn't be on xbox but that's out of their control these superhero games that are licensed elsewhere that's out of their control i want to know what 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 naughty dog is doing i want to know what insomniac is doing with the the owned playstation ip uh ben studios Santa Monica, what are they doing with the Sony owned IPs and where, and how can we get to a point to where we're at least getting one a year? I mean, we already got a shit ton of exclusives in Final Fantasy 7 and fucking Rise of the Ronin and Grand Blue Fantasy and Hell to, God damn, we got that in the first three, four months of the year. That's sick. I don't care what anybody say. You get mad. 
and a dig. And me personally, the shit that's dropped in these four months, I'm way more interested in any of this shit. Like if someone said, hey, look, here's what you got. You got all the exclusive content that came from Sony this year. And then you got avowed. <laughs> uh, what's that? That clockwork game that's supposed to be coming out this year. Indiana Jones and Hellblade. You're allowed to do one swap, but you got to select the lion's share of one game. Do one swap, select the lion's share of, you know, whatever side, but you can play those games anywhere. What are you selecting? I'm letting you know right now. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm pointing to what PlayStation offered. I'm saying, don't swap out shit. You have a wonderful gaming day. This whole, I think we're using the wrong terminology. I am with you guys and gals about where are the 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 SIE owned first party studio games? But stop using terminology that doesn't suit you as a gamer. Let's stop worrying about fucking profit margins that are for investors. When that's that doesn't mean shit right now. The whole fucking gaming industry is a shitty investment right now. Nobody's looking at the gaming industry as a investment to make a quick buck. If anything, people have made bare investments, meaning they made investments they plan to have sit. They made bare investments. And right now it's a down period. They might be moving some cash to some more lucrative places. But as far as an investment that people want to hop on, you know, to make a quick buck. No, the game industry isn't there yet. But people are making some beer, some long-term investments there because they expect it to pick back up. So when you talk about profit margins and you're worrying about profit margins, the only people worrying about Sony's profit margins are investors that are looking to make a quick buck. Long-term investors aren't worried. Nobody, gamers definitely shouldn't be worried. Okay, so stop talking about profit margins. Stop talking about how profitable Spider-Man 2 was when already, not even six months out yet, I don't think, already Spider-Man 2's made $700 million and it, we already know how much it cost. What the fuck are we talking about here? Stop it. Number two, stop using these internal terminologies on which type of exclusive is the best. I get where you guys are coming from. You are just indoctrinating yourselves with the wrong terminology, which throws you in a loop. And we get the bullshit conversations that we're getting. And we get people having to ask Sean Layton to clarify. And Sean Layton is simply telling y'all, look, this is internal documentation conversation. Figure out something else. And I think the best way around that is to say, look, is it a full SIE exclusive or not? That's it. Is it an FSC or not? So I love that type of clarity that came from Sean Layton. I thought that was the shit. And again, shout out to, to the WUPS people for focusing on that. Let's go to the chat real quick. See what you guys are harking about over here. Uh, we got Casey says, yo, 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 what's up, everybody? What's up, Casey? What's going on, brother? <gasps> Cold Blood said, he's mad at me. That's why I'm not on the show, because I fought for you guys. <laughs> hey, no, Cold Blood, are you home? If you mother... Uh, 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 Cold Blood, uh, if you're home, I'll bring you in a little bit. <laughs> we all riot juice. Oh, that's what's up. He's <laughs> I like that shit. Hey, yo, we need to call something riot juice. I like that. I like that name. Riot Juice. We got to call something Riot Juice, man. We got to think of that name. We got to take that name and use it for something. I like that fucking name. 
Riot Juice. Uh, PRK Gunplay Gaming and Comics says, I think a lot of these new gamers brought this mentality in. PlayStation has always been bigger on deals with other studios. PlayStation 4 was the outlier in, the re in, in that respect. Look at the, yeah, bro, fucking A, man. Jeez Louise. Like that's the hip hop quotable of the day. I'm, I look, I've been gaming for 35 plus years, PRK. I'm tired of these young, these young mofos. They, they really, and yes, I'm gatekeeping. My old ass is sitting on my lawn, shaking my fist, telling you get, get off my lawn. I'm, they, they anger me so bad, man, because I grew up with this shit as a kid, and to see them like destroy it and distort the foundation of it from their misinterpretations and their misunderstanding of it just agitates the hell out of me. You are absolutely right. It never been big on their first y'all saw the unicorn of what was last gen and y'all think this is the way every year no you're not gonna get the unicorn which was what what year was that um 2017 where here let's go back to the web where you got one two three four five six exclusives in general and you got one two three three FSCs. You got six exclusives all together, th three FSCs. That's that was that's some unicorn shit. That don't normally happen. That's not how that's not how the house of PlayStation was built, man. Y'all motherfuckers, all you gotta do is just man, just go if the shit's look, man. Anything that happened in gaming after 2000. There's no excuse for you to not be aware of it. I was there at the advent of the internet when people started posting shit on the internet. Fucking, um, what do you call that show, man? Uh, oh, man. The one that they tried to come back, but they had all that controversy. Um, we're attacking the show. Y'all know what I'm talking about, that network. Um, but I, I was there when when they were something they were called something else and but all that shit's on the internet, man. When when they started putting E3 on the internet and all that, bro, all all those archives are there. Anything before 2000, you have to be really careful about because the internet really wasn't big. So you're you're getting someone giving you their interpretation of a clip. Like a, they'll, they'll show you the, like some grainy ass clip and try to break it down to you or whatever. And a lot of that shit is, is misinformed, is taking things out of context. But as of like 2000 and beyond really, stuff was hitting the internet directly. It's there. All you gotta do is do the research. I get it was 24 years ago, but the internet changes everything back in my day if i wanted to do the history of something i had to get the fuck up out of my bed out of my chair wherever go to a library and search through books that i think might have the information i'm looking for so like what you young people are able to search up and get an answer for or get a a, a result for i want to don't necessarily want to say it's the answer Y'all so damn indoc indoctrinated, but what what y'all can get a result for in 30 seconds. I literally spent hours <laughs> trying to research. And we did we made a day of it. We did it on the norm. Went to a library, talked to a librarian, grabbed like nine or ten books, started going through them through the library, taking footnotes and seeing what was what. Then, you know, based upon one footnote, well this didn't give me enough details miss librarian or mr librarian so is there a book that you know that talks about this even more that's what we had to do now y'all get everything at y'all fingertips and y'all are so dumb <laughs> like it annoys me and i and there is no way to sugarcoat it i can't be nice about it because of what i used what i know that people used to have to do just to get that information that's right there in front of you yeah, the way Google is, is designed now, it's fucked up. Google is designed to give you the most ad attractive results first. You know what I'm saying? To help out their bottom line. It, it, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like it as a search engine. 
anymore. I used to love Google. Now it's become shitty. That being said, you can still refine your searches and take five minutes where it used to take us a full day. And then we weren't even done. We'd take the books that we had home and have to go through them over the weekend and shit. See, back in the day, this is why I think I gatekeep so much. And maybe you guys can understand this. Back in the day, when you were a nerd, you were a nerd. Like the amount of research and turning over stones to find facts and information was exhausting. Like I said, I just explained to you. So like, say if me and you are having a conversation and you're like, well, how, okay, this shit that you're looking at on the screen. And again, shout out to Porter Rock for providing this live. Thank you, P, appreciate you, bro, as always. The shit that you're looking at on the screen, look at that shit, bro. To confirm this information, if I didn't already had it, have the magazines, or I would go to the library. It would probably take me about two or three days to find to figure that out all you got to do is watch porter rocks podcast you watch a five minute snippet of what he has to say and you got it or motherfuckers take that slide and share it everywhere porter rock helps tell you so in order for us to find the facts, we had to look, look, bro. And we made sure it was factual because we spent a lot of time on this shit. Nerds from my day and geeks from my day took knowing facts and knowing it exactly how it works, knowing how things exactly work. That was creme de la creme. It wasn't about winning an argument. Yes, you were prepared for any argument because you had all the facts. Then you had to store that shit in your data banks, bro, in your in your brain. You had to store that shit in your mind. There was no fucking phone. There was no Google. So I had to search days for the information that it takes y'all like 30 seconds to five minutes to find. And I had to remember all this shit. So when we had the nerd debates at the arcades or wherever we had the crib playing Genesis or whatever, I know that shit. I even know the book where it came from. If I wanted to, I'd bring that motherfucker to school the next day. Look at this shit, mother. Bro, we had to know our shit, but y'all are so poisoned with misinformation and convenience that to y'all it's just all about telling a tantalizing lie and it even got to be factual let me search it up on google and let's see what has the most results oh this is what google says aha suck it that's why we gatekeep because we look at you newfound nerds y'all have no respect for the facts y'all have no respect for understanding how shit is y'all take everything for granted Hell yeah, I'm on my uh, my lawn shaking my fist, telling you to get the fuck off of it. Get off my grass. You're damn right. Y'all have no respect for lineage, understanding how things came about, facts, none of that shit. And I'm glad when we have these, these moments that are becoming rare, where you'll have someone like a Sean Layton sitting down and spewing the facts and bringing clarity and making us revisit and rethink how we observe stuff. Like, should we be all wired up and creamy knuckled about first, second, third part? No, is it exclusive? For one, for two, is it an FSC? Is it a, a first, is it a um, first party Sony SIE exclusive? SIE owned exclusive. If it's not an FSE, okay, that's not solely under Sony's control. It depends on what type of non FSE it is. 
I would say like a non FSC, like a, um, um, Rise of the Ronin. They have more control over because that developer is more at PlayStation's beck and call than an MLB The Show is because Major League Baseball don't give a fuck what Sony want to do. Sony better do what they tell them to do and they better produce the results. So I thought that talk conversation was important. Let's go on to some more comments. Um, G4 TV. Thank you, Sean. He says, like you said, one game from Sony itself is years enough. As long as the rest of the library is extensive and varied, it's what I expect. Yeah, exactly, bro. Is it a full Sony exclusive? Do they own the IP? Do they own the studio? If it's an FSC, I, I can I can deal with one a year. Because I don't want them to, to just operate to some arbitrary number and then the shit becomes watered down. <clears throat> um, T. Harris says, and walk to the library in the snow, storm barefoot. I remember dial up in the Encyclopedia Britannica demo. Emma 2 k got a warrant out for his arrest for, for overdue books. I did have a shit ton of overdue. Oh, bro. Yeah, man. I did have a shit ton of overdue books, man. Carnegie Library. Yeah, man. I remember when I turned 18. I, um, because they have, you know, they sometimes they would they would let you go, but there were some books that they thought were so important that they would never like roll off your 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 catalog or whatever what you owe. So I remember when I turned 18, bro, I had to pay the library like three hundred dollars, but I was making money. I was making good money. I was doing I was doing some um some some crazy it was legal definitely was legal i was doing some crazy shit i was, make, I was making money that a normal 18 year old in the work workforce doesn't make bro so yeah one of the first things i did because i always I always value um knowledge and learning i always i'm i'm not one of those people that walk with my shoulders hunched up like i know it all no if i know your feet and me bullshit yeah i'm gonna counter it but I wake up every morning with the notion of what can I learn today? And what can I pass down to other people? You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, it was important for me because it was a long period of time I couldn't go to the library <laughs> because I have overdue books and they get lost or destroyed or some shit like that. But I didn't want to take them back again. I don't, there is no Google. You got to remember this shit, man. So, um, yeah, I, I owed them like three, four hundred dollars. I remember paying that when I was, you know, with three hundred. I, I don't even know the cost of inflation. I, that's how much money I owed them because I had some big, like some big, 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 big books that I never took back. They were expensive books. And I don't know if you were, well, in the Carnegie Library, they put certain stickers in these books to where these were serious books. And if you didn't return these motherfuckers, yeah, man, yeah, you was paying dough for them. Yeah, so I I, 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 I didn't have warrants, T, but I, yeah, but, but you know what I'm saying? I had, I had to pay the cost to be the boss for some of the books I didn't bring back the way I should have. All right. So yeah, that, th those are my thoughts on that part of the interview. Um, another thing that was brought up was exclusive budgets, um, where I think this shot down a lot of bullshit that was out there too. Uh, this is, and, and, and I, I think this is a worthy discussion and we're going to focus on this more this week. Sean says we have to scale back the ambition, not the creative, not the creative ambition, not the entertainment ambition. Again, I want 15 to 20 hour games as the average age of the gamer has increased over time from early twenties to early thirties. Remember when I told y'all that shit? Remember when I told y'all that shit? Nobody, y'all laughed. <laughs> Don't know 30 year old play games. Y'all some dumb motherfucker. Remember when I told y'all that shit? That the average age of today's gamers in the early 30s. But I digress. We've seen the swap between people who are time rich and many people rich and money poor to people who are time poor and money rich. 
Oh my fucking God. That's, whoo shit. Testify. He is preaching. This is the most pivotal sentence that I think could have said, could have been said. I want to read that to you guys again. I don't think you understand how powerful that was. As the average age of the gamer has increased over time from early 20s to early 30s. Listen to this. We've seen the swap between people who are time rich and money poor. Like for those of you that are old, like me, T is here and, and, and PRK. Like we're back in the day, we were time rich. We had all the time in the world, but we probably didn't have a whole bunch of money. And so therefore, you know, exclusives, except for, you know, with the N64, when they had their ridiculous prices, where their games were like $89, $99 or whatever, I except for that time, games were relatively, even to the cost of inflation, weren't considered bad. They were considered durable. You know what I'm saying? But you've gone from a time to where people may have been money strapped, but they had all the time in the world to where people are money rich. Like we're older now. I got cake. I can buy games. I'm, you know, we're giving away shit to y'all, but I don't have the time anymore. Like we'll, Cobla and I will talk all the time about, you know, uh, the, <laughs> once you get married and you start having kids, it's, it's a wrap, bro. It is a wrap. I had a conversation with my, my kids all the time. My kids like to travel. And I'm like, when my one daughter, she loves to travel. She like to go to these places, these adult resorts, when I say adult resort, I don't mean that you be getting butt ass naked. I mean, like, you know, they be drinking and shit like that. I'm like, you can't go there and be leaving your kids. Like, it's over. It's not about you anymore. You had these motherfuckers. Now you got paid. You got, you know, you, <laughs> you got to pay attention to them. It's a wrap. Because no decent parent is going to look at their kids' development and realize that they need to be a part of it and ain't going to get involved. Especially with the crazy the world is today, you need your parents. You need both of them motherfuckers. I don't want to hear, I don't, you know, we could call it toxic or whatever. I don't give a shit. I was raised in a single parent home. I vowed not to have that for my, my kids. My mom tried her best. That motherfucker had four jobs at times. She had no less than two. We never saw her. We raised ourselves. That's a horrible situation. But she did the best that she could. That's not, that's not an ideal situation for your kids. They need both of their parents. And they got nothing to do with, oh, the, the woman can and now. Oh. There was a point in time where my wife had worked all these crazy hours because we was trying to get money. So I was doing most of the parenting. The household suffered when she wasn't around as much. You need adequate access to both of your parents, man. You do. Don't believe this mumbo jumbo bullshit. And when you're a parent and you're watching your kids, the development of your kids, if you ain't, if you're a decent parent and you ain't a part of that the way you need to be, it's, it's going to hit you in your soul and you're going to have a problem. And, it, and, and it's going to shine through. And then people are going to look at you based off of what your kids did, done. That's going to reflect on you. So it's not just parenting as being an adult, being in, in, you know, the United States, for instance, 
we went from having one of the most lackadaisical work schedules to the most hectic. Like I think from 2000 to 2010 or 2005 to 2010, um, the American work hours have become the most hectic globally. And then when it comes to developed nations, we have the least amount of care for our workers. I'm not going to get into the debate on, you know, should we have more? Should we have less? But I'm just letting you know the conditions that you do. So when you talk about the largest console market, which is the United States. And then you just look at just period the age of the average gamer. There's not a lot of time on our hands. Even for me who works from home. There's not, there's not a lot of time. There's too much adulting, as they say, that has to be done. So what Sean Layton is saying here is based off his observations, which I think are very, very pivotal and very, very eye-opening, is that not that we necessarily need games that are less um, as far as quality, but maybe they don't need to be as long. Because look, gaming is an expensive hobby. It's a luxury hobby. And the if you're if the age of the average gamer is in the 30s, I think there was research done to where the average gamer household had a hundred thousand dollars in this in, in income. I had heard that there was a study that said that the average gamer has about $100,000 in income in that house. Now, a lot of us that are listening to this now may say, bullshit, I don't have that much, but we're hardcore gamers. We're a smaller slice of the pie. Some of us may have it. Like, the gamer that... Sean is 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 talking or describing that is my household with the combinate definitely with the I mean with one of our incomes we're almost there so the combination of our incomes we are definitely in that bracket so we have the income for games we just don't have the time Right. So what can you do if the average gamer has the money? They don't mind paying the $70. They have the money to do it, but they don't have the, they're like, they're looking at a game and they're like, man, I can't even touch the surface of that game. Why bother? How do you appease that? And Sean Layton's response is, you know, shorter games. He says that person can't fit an 80 hour game in their lifestyle. I still have Red Dead Redemption 2, he says, and shrink wrap on my shelf. It's way too much. <gasps> Absolutely. Like there are some, like I love, my favorite games that get me excited, that like put me in a trance are JRPGs. But the way I play JRPGs, by the time I finish the game, there's like 140 hours at least that I put into the game. Why? Because I grind a lot. I'll go into an area. I'll keep fighting, fighting, fighting the same boss until I'm like, I like to be a little bit OP until like I'm, I'm like two or three levels above where I was, where I first started in that area. And then I'll move on to the next area, rinse and repeat. So by the time I'm done with an RPG, there's at least 140, 150 hours put in the game. And now all these games are RPG length. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like 50, 60 hours to finish. That's, that's, that's intimidating to a gamer to say, look, I'll never get through this. And gamers like to, to get to the beginning and an end of a game. Now, if it's a live service game, that's different. There is really, there's technically no beginning and end. 
but i think when it comes to these large stories like it's cool to have games like the elder scrolls and the bethesda games and these and witchers and shit like that but everybody trying to make a game like that maybe is not a necessity like a game that is like um spider-man 2 that there is a lot more in the game if you want to do it sure but you can beat spider-man 2 what they say in like 15 hours i think what sean is saying is we need more of those games and maybe we need more games not necessarily even like spider-man 2 because spider-man 2 got so much spider-man 2 honestly feels like it's too much of a game not that it's too much of a game because there it takes too long to beat. but it seems there's so much good shit in there that i legitimately think that you could have taken spider-man 2 and you know made a part one and part two and still charge 70 dollars that's that's how crazy that game is there's too much shit going on in that game man like they could have taken that concept built a game around half of what's going on in spider-man 2 and, and made two totally different games and for you know and, and charge 70 dollars for both games that being said i think what sean is saying is look man you can have a straight game 20 hours long from beginning to end maybe 25 hours max let that be the game you're done and people will appreciate that experience and, and i think that's true like when i'm playing atomic heart i haven't finished that yet i don't need to be playing atomic heart for 90 hours like that's a very straightforward game and i really enjoy that game you know i'm cool after like 20 hours with that game but i'm pretty sure atomic heart is probably longer than that like i'm already like what 10 hours in the game and i'm and i'm hardly scratching the surface i think that's what sean's speaking to is that we need shorter shorter games shorter high quality games that's okay and i'm and i'm with that i like you know what for instance i'll give you a prime example one of my favorite games like everybody loves resident evil 4 that, that's fine cool with you i'm not my favorite one is resident evil 5 why very high quality game crazy game i love that game um i actually tried to stream that game on justin tv and if i'm telling my if y'all know do y'all know what justin tv is let me see if somebody in the chat can tell me what, what justin tv is i tried streaming that game on justin tv it was one of the first games that i tried to stream justin tv see if y'all remember that one but um when i tried I, that was one of the first games i tried doing there I, I was unsuccessful but i love that game game was was a great title um and it was like what maybe 15 hours to to finish the game but it had a replay factor. If I wanted to get more items and do different shit, I could play it again for another 15, which it had a very, that's why I love Final Fantasy. I mean, Final, Resident Evil 5 had a very high replay factor. They designed that very well for you to replay it. And I love that game. That is my, by, by far my favorite uh, Resident Evil game. Yep, there you go. There you go. T. T Harris is an old head. <laughs> T. Harris officially is an old head. He ain't fretting. I was wondering if he was, if he was, you know, if he was fretting or pro profiling or posing. No, T. Yeah, Justin TV was Twitch. It used to be Justin TV. That was Twitch, and then it changed to Twitch. So um yeah man i think that um sean may be on to something i'm not i'm not willing yet to say i totally agree because i like my long games <laughs> i love like my far cries and shit like that but i think he's on to something to where i think the average gamer like myself who doesn't who, who you know after a week of streaming like if you stream for like seven hours or four or five hours a day for like a good week 
they're okay with finishing the game. Sean is saying that we need more of those games. And, and I, I, I'm not saying that he's wrong. I think it's a very interesting conversation. All right, so let's go back. Uh, currently playing through Horizon Zero Dawn, Frozen Wilds, DLC again in ultra settings in anticipation of Forbidden West winning to coming to PC, I guess. PC eating good this year, both Xbox and PlayStation feeding us PlayStation gamers good. Okay. Ass naked retreats, he said. <laughs> Sussy uncle vibes. <laughs> uh... No problem at all when the PlayStation 5 Pro comes out. I will have three PlayStation 5s. I gave my son the PlayStation 5 OG. I will give my daughter the PlayStation 5 Slim. I will keep the PlayStation 5 Pro expensive. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. We, we have the disposable income. It's just about the time. Are we going to have the time? Um, I see your comment. Sean, as soon as it pops up here on my on my grid, I'm, I'm going to put it up here. It's a good, com great comment. So I like what Sean Layton had to say. Um, Here's Sean's comment, though, in the chat. He says, that's why I like Grand Blue Fantasy. Shit took me 13 hours to beat in the story. I had a shit ton of put. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, where you don't feel like, you know, oh, man, I I'll never finish this game because completion it is part of the gaming experience. And if it's not a live service game, you you, you want to have that completion, you know, that completion narrative checked off too. All right, so let's. Uh, the next part I wanted to talk about is exclusives do matter. Sean Layton said exclusives do matter, um, and this is what he had to say about that. I'm going to pause because I think there's audio to this. No, it's not audio to this part. He said exclusivity will uh always be important it helps focus and highlight the features of your platform what can you do tech here technically that you can't do somewhere else exactly um and i think w when people make the false equivalency of playstation to xbox and then playstation doing the exact same thing that xbox does here's the thing xbox didn't focus on They didn't focus properly on games that would make the box sing. If anything, you could argue that the Xbox games did the worst job in highlighting the Xbox platform, particularly under Phil Spencer. Hear me out. The PlayStation 3 games, even when they were going through early development issues. Um, I remember when Dead Space first came out, that at the time was the best looking game. But then I think Uncharted 2 or Uncharted was out before. And Uncharted blew that out of the water. Like the PlayStation 3 games developed by the first party and second party studios looked insane. They looked sick. Even though the rest of the world was having problems porting games, you know what I'm saying? But with PlayStation, they made sure there was enough that went into those games looking crazy. So it did hype up the play. You know, it did. It made the situation better for the console than what it would have been without that development, that exclusive development. Your exclusive games are always supposed to make the box sing. And that's where I think Xbox failed. Um, it's two biggest games of 2023 as far as recognition. Redfall and Starfield did not fulfill the promise of the box. You remember when these boxes were introduced to us, what was the talk of the town? 4K 60. And being f falling short of 60 frames per second, and then the games, you know, I, I can't speak to Starfield. I mean, people said the Starfield looked good in 4K on, on the Xbox, whatever. Um, but I can tell you Redfall, particularly in the cloud was trash 
at launch. Um, and I'm not even talking about the game. I'm just talking about the way it looked. So that's the purpose of your exclusive content is to make your box sing. It's to make it is to provide system sellers things that show off your box and its capabilities and would increase its um its saturation and because xbox games weren't really designed to do that it makes sense for xbox that those games go elsewhere particularly on playstation we're going to talk about that a little bit it doesn't make sense and there, therefore there isn't a need for playstation games to go elsewhere like for instance you're getting the better versions of these Xbox games on PlayStation already. A lot of these games haven't even been out for four years or whatever. And we're not talking about porting the PC four years later. We're talking about a year, maybe two years later. In a case of Sea of Thieves, okay, maybe four years. But it's going to a competing console. And they're already getting defend like Pentiment <laughs> It's a better version than what you're playing on the Xbox one. It so you don't have that same dynamic with PlayStation. So they don't need to put their exclusives elsewhere because their exclusives do a fantastic job in selling the console. They show off the console and they help sell the console and they help sell the console. Like, as I explained at the beginning of this to the demographic that they're intended for. Yeah, they, they, they may cap out at like 10, 15 million, but they were designed and they brought over that 10, 15 million of gamers. Then, okay, this game brings over this 10, 15 million a game. So you guys are new to this and you think that every gamer plays everything. So if I buy a PlayStation, I'm supposed to be playing everything. No. And then y'all get, y'all get fuddled with these player numbers where, um, thank you for, um, Matt Piscatella coming out and saying you can't compare sales to player numbers, particularly off a subscription service. If everybody has access to a game and they're like, you know what? I don't like this game. So I'm, I'm moving on. What is, what is racking that number up mean to you? It, it means nothing. But if I put down my cold hard cash for this, and then there's millions of others that did that to get this access to this title and to own the license, that speaks way more volumes. So I think you guys are being uh, indoctrinated <laughs> by seeing, oh, there's tens, there's 20 million players on but but microsoft is losing money on that proposal and giving so many people access to just be able to boot up the game and press start that's not more impressive than an actual sale like it doesn't hold weight to an actual sale like what did, i saw something from snoop dogg the other day where he said he had over a billion streams on spotify and it wasn't even forty five thousand dollars what if snoop dogg had a billion sales like what if cds were still around and he sold a million CDs or if somebody went instead of, instead of streaming it, they went and bought it off of iTunes. I don't know if you could do that or whatever, but they went and bought the actual physical instead of streamed it. If that was happening off of a billion people, that's different. So yeah, users and players, they're not even a 10th of a percent in value to actual buyers. All right. Um, let's see here. He says, when people say exclusives don't matter, they forget that Nintendo Switch exists. Metroid, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bunch of malarkey that's aimed to look at one platform in their complete deviation from what they said they were going to do at the beginning of this gen 
and trying to excuse it and everybody that was head to hand charts and said well i've seen the playstation console doing this under xbox now, now they're trying to explain it and say that the whole market is is crashing <laughs> that's why it's happening no the, the only thing that's common throughout the market is it's not an attractive bid for bullish investors. That'll change. It happens every single sector. That'll change. But every game company is not in the same position. They, they, are a lot of them going, or most of them going through a correction phase? Absolutely. Is the industry in totality not uh an attractive place for bullish investors absolutely hold on one second give me one second Joe. Okay, sorry about that. So, yeah, it is only that's the only purpose that's happening. The only reason why that's happening. Uh, another thing that was said is buy your games. I think this is where we have our audio. Buy your games. So, Leah, let, let's play this audio from the What's Up podcast. Uh, and. Let's do it right Hold on now. Today's important message is support your developers. Go out and buy your games. Embrace the industry. Today's important. Yeah, that's the audio that he says, buy your games. And then to take a direct quote um, from what Sean Layton has said, um, let's do this. Let me mute that. Let me put the music back on. Um, it says former CEO Sean Layton says that subscription models cannot support developers of AAA games that cost hundreds of millions of dollars. I think subscriptions aren't interesting for people to experience gaming, but for me, that's the world of AA games or single A games. I, I totally concur. Um, if you're getting into AAA, if you're getting into double, triple digit millions of dollars, you can't make it back on a subscription service. There is not enough nickels in that box to ladder up 200 million. The platform itself, whether it's Game Pass or that matter PlayStation Plus, the platform can make money. It can sustain itself. I'm talking about the developer who made the game, who put it out there. Okay. So yeah, keep that in mind. I think that's a very important point that he made. All right. So with that said, I want to move on to the next topic because and shout out to, to, to again, what's up podcast for highlighting that great stuff. Shout out to you guys. You are excellent and keep up the good work. Uh, Xbox games, the game pass. I mean, I'm sorry. Xbox games, the PlayStation. I want to show a couple of tweets that we saw out there today in regards to that tweet. Number one is uh rare is working with co-developers who have played who have playstation experience and sony itself has been extremely helpful with catching up calls and making up its own staff available whenever needed when projects were still top secret if, if we went and visited their studios we had to do it not wearing sea of thieves t-shirts and i'm sure you can imagine as i'm sure you can imagine and secondly um this second tweet is I think one that reverberated through the gaming space this weekend. A lot of people were really upset about this one. Um, it says, we think this is an interesting point in time for us 
to use what some of us, some of the other platforms have right now, says Phil Spencer, um, to help grow our franchise. So we're going to do that. Um, and I think this came from um, the, uh, um, this came from the Microsoft Xbox podcast a couple of weeks ago. And this is, but you know, so, but this is being drawn up and resurfacing to say, look, y'all, this uh, 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 Sea of Thieves is killing it in pre orders on PlayStation. Um, it's not going to be those four games. Cut that crap out because you got a lot of people that are calling people names and calling them this and saying, oh, you guys are suckers because you're going crazy over four games. No. When you see the writing on the wall, you don't have to be sucked up in the tornado to know that a storm is coming. And those that have enough common sense to see what's going on are like, look, I jumped into this ecosystem for this. You sold me on this. Now you're delivering another vision that is completely different from what I wanted. More importantly, if I knew you guys were going to do this, I would have just invested in a, in a PlayStation. Or I would have invested in a PC. Right? So now that that's going on, and then we found out too that the people at Rare had to frost their windows. <laughs> so the other developers couldn't see the secret dev kits. They like literally had to hide them. It makes me curious to when we see stuff from Jez Gordon, right? Where Jez says stuff like, uh, what did he say? Um, people are highlighting the fact that Jez said that, um, what did he say? Oh, he said that he has Sea of Thieves. Uh, what did he say? He said that um, according to Jazz, hold on. Okay, somebody, let me see if I can find this. Damn it. I thought I had this link. All right. So <laughs> let me bring this person up. someone that I, I'm going to say, and I don't mean this to be mean spirited, but I'm going to say, excuse me, that if you, if your, if your goal in life isn't to enshrine the Xbox in ever loving greatness, no matter what, I don't think you can listen to a creator like this. Like this is full fledged um, fandom, like a, a, a Taylor Swift fan site type of content that you have here. Um, if you're looking for the truth, they are not stewards of the truth. They only want to enshrine Xbox in the most positive light possible and they will peddle misinformation in order to do that and he doesn't seem like a horrible guy even though well i've never met this guy he doesn't seem horrible he seems like frontwardly he has a nice personality now knowing who i know I know all the shit <laughs> pretty much that a lot of these content creators have tried in the past and the efforts and the campaigns that the shady shit that they've done. So, you know, but I'm not going to speak to that. I'm just going to say from a front facing point of view, he, he doesn't appear to be a bad guy, but as far as in the direction of um, facts, this is not where you want to go. He says, thank you, Jazz Gordon says mr boomstick 
could you imagine the negative coverage around this instead of conversation around Ninja Theory's next masterclass release on Xbox? It would be nonstop on Xbox, doesn't have exclusives because you know that'll be the way it's framed. Just saying. Okay. What is he responding to? Jazz Gordon made a comment based off of this guy, Risk It for the Biscuit. He was on, uh, I don't know what the name of this podcast is. The Infinite Podcast, where I think it's a bunch of, um, I'm assuming a bunch of uh, Xbox enthusiasts as well. This is the circle that the Risk It for Biscuit guy, for the Biscuit guy is in. And he says, according to Risk It to Biscuit's his idol sloth, he has heard from four separate sources that Hellblade 2 port, that there is a Hellblade 2 port for PlayStation. Okay, so here's the thing. I get that Jazz has connections and Jazz knows things and he's entrusted with things and he has people on the inside of stuff, right? Hold on one second. But I need somebody to understand something very clearly here. Jazz a long, t- no, not a long time ago, Jazz a few months ago had did the same response to rumors about what's the name going? Uh, what's the a uh, hi-fi rush going over to PlayStation? Um, he had said to say, and he's had said it so clearly about hi-fi rush that hi-fi rush wasn't going. It was PlayStation fans coping. No, granted, after that got proven false, he could have said, you know what? I'm going to be more selective in what I confirm and what I cannot confirm. And maybe now he can get people, you know, higher up the food chain that want to control this noise and say, look, if we tell Jazz Gordon this, we can get this out without us having to confirm it or not through a controlled leak. Maybe that is happening. Maybe it isn't happening. I have no idea. But all I know is that if Rare went through the rigors of hiding it from the developers that are actually working on their game, if the developers didn't know, if the people that working on these games don't know, why would I believe Jez Gordon would know better than the people that actually work on the games? That would be like, say you're at work, right? Say you're at work and say, you know, your, your your place your your job is about to um lay off about 20 people your place of employment for your department your department is about to lay off 20 people nobody knows but some reporter of essentially a fan site finds out like there's actually a like somebody from the executive office around a process that is heavily scrutinized and heavily shush shush hush hush that has a lot of lawyers and, and legal representatives and PR people involved you're trying to tell me that the other employees don't know that aren't affected 
but some fandom reporter is going to find out like somebody's going to be that irresponsible to let them know over the actual people that are in the department. I find that hard to believe. Microsoft is going through the mic. The leadership at these studios are going through the rigors to hide this from the other developers. Does Jez know? I don't think Jez is a reliable source anymore. Why? Number one, because of Jez, how Jez reacted when this pivot was first reported, he was highly against it. Number two, even if he wasn't highly against it, we have seen that Microsoft has a penchant of not being fully transparent or at times dishonest about what they're doing. So yes, this could be a control leak, but this could be a disingenuous controlled leak. Well, we want Jazz to, to calm this down. Hey, you, go tell Jazz this ain't happening before someone finds out that it is happening. And then when there's blowback, who looks like the bad guy? It's Jazz. Excuse my French, but they don't give a fuck about Jazz. They don't. Because Jazz, when all this was going out, said he don't give a fuck about them. Which I'm not saying he should. Kudos to him for that. But Jazz is just, he's expendable. He's a resource to them. If they are shielding this from their own developers, why the fuck would he know? He don't know. He knows what they want him to know. Nobody knows. The only people that know are the people that are in control and the people that are told and or entrusted with this information. After everything that's happened, especially after that information leaked to Xbox era, Nobody, and I mean nobody, is going to risk leaking anything to any of these motherfuckers unless they are told from the top to do so. Trust me, I know how this shit works. Unless Phil Spence or somebody said, go, yeah, go, go tell him. It's okay to tell him. But that doesn't mean what's being leaked is true. I'm not saying that it's false, but it doesn't make it true. They are in damage control mode. They have to move forward with a certain initiative. They're being quiet about it. God damn it. They did the motherfucking show. Uh, the, the partner show and had an AI sound like an AI bot <laughs> announcing the show. They don't want no contact with you motherfuckers right now. They don't want to smoke. They went all out and hired uh, H uh, Harry Belafonte and Jack Nicholson, <laughs> Tom Hanks for their promo for uh, um, sea, uh, sea of Thieves coming to PlayStation. But when they talk to y'all, it's the AI bot. And yeah, there's the multi plats that are coming. This shit coming. This is what you get. They don't want no smoke. They don't want nothing to do. No, and, and, and trust me, Satya is steaming. That motherfucker's on a rampage to find out if they already haven't discovered who told this shit. Trust me, nobody is risking their necks to let Jazz Gordon know something. If anything comes out, I'm betting my bottom dollar on it that it's a controlled leak. Meaning, Phil, Matt Booty, Sarah Bond, so they're made aware of it and they're like, go ahead, you tell that to keep the motherfuckers at bay. And that don't necessarily mean that the shit is true. They don't have to tell y'all the truth. 
They ha they've been lying to y'all here and there for Lord knows how fucking long. <laughs> I look forward to Hellblade 2 on my PlayStation. I just, if you're a consumer, I think the best way to look at this is just look, man, the shit's coming, man. When is it going to come? Like Cold Blood has said and previously to sit there and say, oh, yeah, it's coming tomorrow or coming this day. I, I think that's bullshit. I think that's dumb and cold blood has elaborate on that. He thinks it's stupid to do that. But I will say this and we're getting to like the last 20 minute mark and I'm cold blood. I'm about to hop in this motherfucker. I'm gonna bring you in. Even though I got a couple more topics. Uh, let's do this. Let's bring you in brother. We got some time and then I got to do some, um, hold on. You're at home, right? You, you at home, Cold Blood? I'm getting out of this, this stage because this shit is stupid. Leave the stage. And okay, listen in. Why, why, listen in. Why can't I end this shit? End the stage for. All right, so we're ending the stage because y'all can't hear me anyway. All right, I'm going into the Geeks Discord. I'll be in there with Cold Blood waiting for him to come in there. Um, what the fuck is that? Here we go. I didn't I didn't know your schedule, Cold Blood, and then I, I figured this would be a good time to check out that stage because me and Lo-Fi was looking at it. And we were trying to get it to I, we thought it worked, but it, clearly it didn't. We just gotta do our job and we just gotta retest this shit over during the week. Matter of fact, me and him, that's part of the reason why I'm gonna be down behind the scenes because me and, me and him are gonna um me and him are gonna work on this a little bit there hello you hello hello fawns oh. what's up brother all right let me get out what's of here. up how was your weekend man busted out that final fantasy i see Oh yeah, baby. Forty hours now. Let me tweet that out. I'll put Cold Blood is now live. You be you become a you become a superhero. Cold Blood is now <laughs> <laughs> live on <laughs> MM2K Gaming News. All right, Here we go. So yeah, man. Uh, what did you think of the Sean? Did you hear the Sean Layton interview? I think you did. No, actually. no, you didn't. Okay, okay. When you get a chance, check it out. But I can validate that. Um, that yeah, all the shit that I that I covered about the uh, first, second, and third part, and he's like, look, man, this is this is industry shit. Like you know. I don't it gets it's it's complicated it can get funky don't worry about it then him talking about exclusive budgets about how he doesn't think that um you know that downgrading the quality is the answer it's like maybe shaving the hours and how long the games are you know not for all but some of these games might be the answer um exclusives matter and the fact that um when it comes to exclusives, like Sony was never just super huge on first party. And then lastly, is like you got he's like, if you want to support the devs, you gotta buy your fucking games. Like, especially these triple A games. Like this subscription shit is not helping them at all, is what he said. So what I mean, based upon the stuff that we covered here, what, what are your initial thoughts on those things? Did we really need Sean Layden to tell us what we've been preaching for fucking years now? exactly can i say something to you brother i don't want you to take this the wrong way but you sound extra sexy on the microphone man wow i i, I, I mean oh, you sound ooh. you you sound extra i don't want you to get mad at me i don't want you to say hold on boss because stop getting zesty with me but you, you sound very god damn don't he sound good hit some hearts y'all in the chat 
I'm sorry, I just had to say that. Go <laughs> your your mic is it, it, it sounds so so enhanced, man. Oh my goodness. But anyway, go ahead, y'all. <laughs> Cold flood is like, hold on. Do I actually sound better now? No, you do. You do. Tell chat. Am, chat, am I lying? If I'm lying, I'm flying. Tell me and tell them tell in the chat. I'm not lying, bro. Like, I know we were talking over the weekend, but fuck. I didn't, I, you know, I haven't heard, I haven't talked to you in a couple days on that mic. I just didn't realize <laughs> how much of, a, of an increase or how much of a boost that is. What y'all think of the chat? Um, geek to sneak in the house. What's going on, brother? He says Jay Gaming, of course. Oh man, Jay, Jay, Jay got the best. He got the best takes. He said uh, he's confirming day and date. <laughs> um, he says because because he the guy from the I'm too sexy. So what's that? Oh, I'm too sexy. Who was that? What was that? Uh, was that uh, Red Said Fred or Right Said Fred or whatever? Mm. Hold on one second. What is my wife text? She said, please don't forget. Like, why can't we just, hold on. One, mm. Mm. <coughs> Jesus. What a um. big noise she's making. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um. Yeah, man. Uh, we don't. No, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, Cold Blood. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. You were saying that you did. We really need him to tell us this shit. Yeah, like he said it at the last interview. Really, mm -hmm. he just elaborated on it again. This time, yeah. Yep. What I get. Yeah. Like. Yeah, uh, you want AAA games? Buy them. You don't want mm -hmm. AAA games? Get Game Pass. Yeah. It's easy. Yep. I totally agree. I think Game Pass is something for AA games, indie games, and shit like that. I think, yeah, that's. I mean, that's cool. I you you just can't sustainably have a subscription service with triple a games in it and then expect a quality narrative to, to be there you know what i mean um now what could subsidize it if microsoft really thinks that it's vital to to people interacting with their shit because i i because you know what i can see where it's part of a bigger strategy where it's like look we want to sell our games everywhere but we see the value in having an ecosystem because look, when we have our own ecosystem and we sell games, we get the DLC revenue, you know what I'm saying? Off the Fortnites and the Apex Legends and all the other shit. Like we make money off of games we don't make. And we, we like that proposal. So we're not, our thing isn't, we're gonna give you quality AAA bangers. Our thing is, you're going to get a bunch of games, including AAA games in Game Pass. That's what you exclusively get with our ecosystem. So I get that. The thing is, is that unlike PlayStation and Nintendo, they can't fund that narrative on the ecosystem alone. It's not enough to bring people to the ecosystem and to the, the cost of it is just too great. So I can see them using the sales on other platforms to help subsidize that narrative and keep the games coming. Um, but yeah, a, a, a subscription service on its own cannot make money with a whole bunch of triple A's, not a whole bunch of quality ones. Hell no, not at all. If you, if you got like a whole bunch of dog shit that you're putting in there, like, I don't know, like Suicide Squad. If Suicide Squad lands in that motherfucker four to six months after launch, after it's dead, right? <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? And nobody else would buy. And therefore, they're not asking for a whole bunch. They're like, okay, you know, just give us 20 million and you can have Suicide Squad in your subscription service for a year or two. You can make money off of something like that. <clears throat> like these games that people want to try and maybe see if they'll like 
after they've sunset and people have lost interest in buying them, maybe they'll be interested. It's like a bargain bin. If you want to create a bargain bin service for bargain bin shit, like normally stuff that's flying off the shelf, bro. Like for instance, um, you just got a new cell phone, a top of the line cell phone is not going to set you. They're not going to discount it 90% and put it on the clearance rack. You know what I'm saying? Like by that, at that time, you're trying to make your money back a top of the line. What's it called? It's the, the value is too high, but if the, if the value depreciated and now you can only get like a, a 10th of the, the, the price for it, then fine, because it's not going to cost you a bunch to do that. But yeah, you, you're not like, for instance, if you were to put Boulder, if, if for, for Larry and to bend the knee and say, okay, fine, we will put Boulder's gate in game pass. Do you know how much money they would have to have in order for that to happen? And how do you make that money back from game pass? If they're at what 33 million and they, and, and with the merger of Xbox live and game pass, they've actually lost subs. How do you, how do you, how do you make that money? So I think Sean Layton is, is, is absolutely right. Um, let me ask you Cobla, what do you think about, um, this risk it for biscuit guy i meant to say this i don't n none of these motherfuckers have connections bro none of them have connections none of them know anybody that's going to give them any new information i do believe because i've heard some shit behind the scenes that i can't tell i do know for a fact that the person that xbox era was talking to definitely knew something was in the works or something was being discussed in regards to some of these games and in, including starfield this there were converse they they definitely knew and they were trying to stop it um but outside of that i don't think you can trust any information even from those that i know that are connected because I can tell you just off of experience, Microsoft would have done an aggressive, who the fuck said this campaign? And all that inf all those information lanes are shut. And I don't know who this risk it for the biscuit person is. I I've never, outside of Twitter, going back and forth with people, I've never heard of them. They are not someone that I, that, that I'm, that I know of to have some type of voices internally. <laughs> yeah yeah that that's that's what i that's what i understand so is he just trolling is he just trying to you know say hey look see engagement bait exactly yeah engagement bait and maybe the you know see i just made this up and look how that so many people look same shit with uh with jazz he was uh, answering everybody that was like, hey, I know some games are coming to PlayStation. He was like, no, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stop coping. It's not happening. Yeah. And then uh, when, the, when the shit ha uh, hits the fan, oh, yeah, it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he I mean, with this risk it for the biscuit, don't trust the single word that motherfucker says. Because he has maybe one connection to someone mm. but even then i would doubt they know what the fuck is going on he's just saying some bs now because he has to get some fucking money out of this account that he got on Twitter. <laughs> um i think them studios know what is happening shout out to ice queen gaming for that um i think some of the people like like where no where said it Rare said that um, that they held this off from their other developers that weren't working on this port. Like they had the PlayStation 5 dev kits in rooms with frost, locked in rooms with frosted windows. So nobody could see it. 
as they should. Yeah, uh, absolutely. My thing is to 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 add even to either the further underscore what Cold Blood is saying. If they're hiding this from the people that are working, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? On th that are there in the studio. Leaking everything. That's why. Say that again. They leak everything, bro. That's yeah. why. Yeah. You you cannot trust a single motherfucker unless they they are in the know. Mm. Yeah, like they are in this fucking room that is with frosted glass or whatever. Exactly. Because exactly. If it leaks out, you you know exactly who leaked that shit out. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And that's why I'm saying nobody's leaking nothing, bro. It, I mean, nobody's leaking anything factual, unless Phil Spencer, Matt Booty, Sarah Bond say it's okay to go ahead and tell them that. But just because they do that doesn't mean it's the truth. Well, they they make the, now the strategy that Sony has have everything under fucking lock. Mm -hmm. Only way these motherfuckers find out is if they get insomniac. Yeah, only then. Yeah. Well, I, I imagine that PlayStation has very tight controls around meetings when they let people know. They keep everything very close to the vest. That's just how they roll. And the only way you can find out what's going on sad enough is if you hack the motherfuckers. They are very close to the vest. Um... Yeah, I think right now Microsoft might be operating the same way. Um, but so therefore I'm saying I, I don't tr I don't trust any leaked information. And I'm not just saying this because I believe that all this shit is coming. No, I'm saying that whether it supports what I'm saying or not, I, I don't believe it. I think any information that you get that's being leaked, it's being approved of at the highest level. Yeah, go ahead and say that shit. Go ahead and tell them that. that that'll get them off our case or, yeah, d d this part is true, but go ahead and tell them that, you know? Because look, who's to say that what Jazz is saying now with all this confidence wasn't told to him by the same person that told him a few months ago, oh no, that's a, that's a lie, right? Who's to say that? Jazz didn't just come up out of nowhere and say, oh, no, I think that's a lie. I'm gonna put. Jazz got that from somewhere. He got it from somebody. He double checked and confirmed. He got it from somebody. And does somebody knows about it? I, does, does, does somebody probably knows about it and lied to him? They don't work. They don't work, bro. They don't work for Jazz. Who the fuck is Jazz? Jazz ain't ain't feeding her family. This this is what Jazz ain't signing her paycheck. Jazz, and this is where, um, who was it? I can't remember. I think it was Broken Games or somebody. Where they were talking about even these people that are connected, they're not always going to be told the truth. You're an ends to a means. Like if you truly think that these executives are your friends, you got another thing coming. You might, they might be friendly with you and they might be your friends, but they're not going to risk their jobs and feeding their family so you can look good on Twitter or YouTube. They don't give a fuck about your YouTube career. So somebody could have very easily said, oh, j you know, Hey, Jazz just came to me, man. It sounds like that motherfuckers are speculating about Hellblade, man. Like, what should I do, man? This, you know, this is government top secret. I don't, I don't want, I don't want to be caught up in this, you know, because he came to me. I don't, I don't know if they're tapping the phones or what. Man, it's okay. Just tell the motherfucker it ain't true, okay? And they just told him it ain't true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get con a controlled leak doesn't mean it's the truth. This is what you guys got to understand. You can get control leaked bullshit. It's all about what's in the best interest of the company. Now, if you keep getting control leaked bullshit, then of course that part, you, you're, you're, you know, you're no longer going to be a valued source. They're going to go their other way. 
But there are some times when it's important for that source, especially if they're within the company, to come to you and say, based upon what the company wants, okay, this we know this isn't true, but go ahead and tell them that it is true. Because that's what's fav most favorable for them. It's like the, the, the source that told mm, that what's that 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 dumbass publication where a guy lied and said that he fired the PR person that said something about Reforged Gaming, but then we found out or that he fired his 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 head of t tweets, but come to find out that it was all him and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he was he was like a Monty Python putting on different costumes and pretending to be eight different people and shit within the same company. And he did have a contact that distributed the codes. And so the contact was responding to something that they heard on YouTube about Starfield coming to PlayStation. So they went back to the contact and said, is this true? And the person said, you know what? I saw this YouTuber. They don't seem big enough to have any connections. I would say this is horseshit, right? So they ran with that. Um, who the f this publication? Like, I think them and Cloud Dosage, and we and we know we're small. We're we're brand new. We're a brand new publication, only a couple of years old. Them and Cloud Dosage is around the same size. Like, we don't live in this ulterior reality where we think that Microsoft is actually in 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 the. In, in this entrenched situation that it's in now that they're gonna leak us something and we're just gonna take it verbatim. We know better. We're not that important. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In the grand scheme. So any information that comes from anybody that's supposed to be a leak, I would be very skeptical of. Not necessarily, not just because they may not know what they're talking about. That's part of it. But they may know, but the heat is so thick right now. They may, it's, it could be a control leak. And so they don't get caught up in this, whatever this investigation is going to be. So they don't get caught up. They're going to go out there and go to Phil Spencer, go to Sarah Bond, go to Matt Booty and say, this person just approached me. I don't want you motherfuckers thinking I had anything to do with the, the leak of Hi-Fi Rush and all that other shit. So I'm coming to you directly. How do you want me to handle this? Just go ahead and tell them that it's absolute garbage even though you were there and you saw the document signed and there's a, you know what I mean? That's how it works sometimes. I don't, I don't trust anything from anybody, right? Not during this period. I don't trust it at all. We, we just don't know. Now there are some situations where like, um, with, with Ghost of Tsushima, I think that leaker that was right about Ghost of Tsushima, who also indicated that something's going on about Starfield, I think that's like a that person must have a connection to um, a jobber or some type of uh, um, publisher who 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 helps with the retail distribution. Like sometimes you'll hire a third party to help distribute your products and services so of course they gotta know so you could have like a third party person that has to be part of the deal and when they find this shit out they're leaking it to somebody uh you could have that situation but i i don't but a jazz gordon or somebody who's getting their information most likely from internally from xbox or microsoft those people are under high alert I wouldn't trust anything from them. 
you're going to have people that are going to get information third hand like i said from like a vendor or somebody that's helping to market something you're going to get more valuable information from those people than you are from someone directly from microsoft why because they're being heavily monitored now i guarantee it and they're not going to risk their jobs so jazz can look good on twitter fuck that oh hell no um he said games worth more than 200 million dollars is hard to keep exclusive no that's not what he said he says that you're lo he said that you're losing your profit margins and it becomes less lucrative when you do that but he also said that playstation and or microsoft can sustain it he said when you start getting up into those past 200 million that that's the budget that you normally have for a game that isn't exclusive he didn't say that's the you know you you lose incentive no if you are trying to sell your box especially if you're in a tight uh competition not saying that playstation's in a tight competition but if you're trying to sell your box and you feel like that this is the game that's going to separate you from the pack because the money's made in the software. If I get a whole bunch of DLCs and third party games that are purchased on my box because of that $500 million game, then it was worth it. So and bringing your games day and date to PC is not the answer because we saw it with Microsoft. Ever since Microsoft started doing it in 2016, the revenue that they've had has slowed in comparison to their competitors. Why? Because if I'm a hardcore gamer, the gamer that buys the most games per capita, I'm sitting there saying, fuck it, I might as well go buy it, build a PC. Why get it? Why? Why settle for for Xbox? Like they 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 told me to buy the Xbox One X. It didn't meet what it's supposed to do. I, I'm doubtful that the Series X is going to do. I'm not going to get burned a second time. I might as well buy a PC. I like the Xbox games, but I, I you know I'm going to play it where the Xbox games play best. I'm going to go get a fucking PC. So at the same time that these Xbox Series X's and shit were being marketed, guess what was coming out? The 3070s and the 30s, you know what I'm saying? 3070 Ti's, 3080s. So motherfuckers wouldn't buy, and that's why you're seeing a lot of PC, pro Xbox PC motherfuckers, because they wouldn't, went to PC got a better gaming experience, got access to more games and the Xbox games that they like to play, play better over there anyway. So that worked out for them. But the problem for Xbox is now, not only are you having to share your revenue with Steam, right? But then now them motherfuckers are buying all their multi-plat games on PC. So you lose all that money, all the DLC money. Went for the Fortnite skins and shit. Now they're being bought directly on PC. You're losing out on all that. That slowed down. That approach slowed down Microsoft's revenue growth. They went from closing that gap significantly. Oh, no, no, no. They, uh, not significantly. They went from closing that gap in a brow raising fashion. In PlayStation's biggest year, they didn't close it completely. They were still well behind by like what um eight billion, but they were getting trounced before. They went from closing that gap in a way that people didn't expect to it spreading again. What happened? Them losing out from the hardcore that went to PC. So that's not a winning proposal, and PlayStation sees that. Now, them dropping shit day and date on the cloud, that's different because they still get to keep all that revenue. It's still running off their platform. They ain't got to share it with no other store. But them going to PC and dropping shit day and date on PC, nah. I, I, that, for the CFO to agree to that, 
Uh, yeah, they'd have to flog. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that. And they've given no indication that's what they're going to do. Like, you've seen a whole bunch of remasters being rumored. Where do you think them remasters are going to go? The remasters are going to go to PC, but those are older games. I think you're going to see them be more aggressive with the number of games that get ported after the fact. But day and date, I don't believe that. Yeah. Everybody has indicated that Game Pass devalue triple A games particularly. You may have a scenario where an indie game or double A game gets a boost from the exposure. You know what I'm saying? But then now that's in threat because you know the triple A games that are in there get the most light there's it's not a mistake that triple a games sell the most i don't mean monetarily i mean by copy like when you look at the most selling games year by year it's the triple a games in totality yeah you you might have a unicorn a power wall might break out or one you know my but the best selling games in comparison, let's not look at the dollar amounts. I'm talking about by units. The most units sold are triple A fucking games. That's not by mistake. Those are the flashiest games. They have the most appeal to the average gamer. Those are the ones that move the needle the most, right? So with that said, when you have a subscription service, that has a fair number of triple a games in them that suffocates the exposure of the double a games we've heard developers complain about that so all right uh yeah so expect a full slate i'm sorry <laughs> that's all i gotta say last but not least the 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 le my least favorite thing to talk about but the, the thing that I'm most anticipating. Um, margins. What'd you say? Profit margins. Problem. <laughs> Hell no, we ain't talking about that shit. Um, <laughs> Y'all got on me last time. I thought I ain't doing that shit no more. <laughs> Let's talk about bonds. The PlayStation is uh, under, or the Xbox is under overselling the PlayStation. No, um, PlayStation 5. This is an interesting tweet from, from, from Fonzarelli. Let me clear the air. I don't have any problems with Fawns. Um, my interactions with him publicly and behind the scenes have always been positive. Do I always agree with what he has to say? No. Have I went back and forth with him at times over things that I thought were clear, speculative bullshit that he's tried to pass off as fact? Sure. But I do that with friend or foe. I have no problem with Fawns. Here's the issue. I have an issue with again names that reverberate through the community cascading narratives that are false because they're trying to save face what am i talking about <sighs> bonds in the rdx crew have been big pr proponents not always fawns to be fair with fawns he's he, he's pushed back at times but they've been big proponents on Xbox going big this year and Xbox doing this and Xbox is going to do that. And Game Pass is going to change this and Game Pass is going to change that. And all that's all that narrative has died. All that narrative has died. Wait, 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 wait. before you go on. Mm -hmm. The motherfucker that said to us, 40 to 50 fps delta yeah with the X xbox series x expect that shit yeah now yeah. says uh, an even better console than the console that dog walked that 40 to 50 fps delta console mm -hmm. is not gonna have 60 fps as a fucking standard well he, he, he has the balls to tell us that now I don't think it was him that said the 40 to 50 frame deltas, but 
to Dude, be fair, he never denied it. He never denied it. Yes. He and and really, you could say that he co-signed on it. Yes, cold. Yes, uh, dealer. Go yeah. fuck PlayStation up. Go, mm. go, go. He yeah. was a fucking fanboy of them as well. Yeah. Until you became uh, a panel member. And that's why I said that a lot of these creators, I remember battling them because I used to battle them when I was a full Xbox fanboy. I used to battle them. Jay of uh, uh, Fonzarelli was one of them. I remember when he was on Brap. And the first, I was like, who is this smug dude? <laughs> I didn't like him at first. We end up talking behind the scenes on some other shit, and I don't mind him. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no problem with Jay. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, I smooth things out, and, 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 you know, it was more of a me thing. But to Cold Blood's point, yeah. He was staunch against Xbox. I remember he was on the Brat podcast, him all day. I don't know if you remember all day, Cold Blood. And all of them, they was dogging Xbox. And I was like, what the fuck is this dude talking about? And I left this long ass soliloquy in the Brat comments, man. And uh, yeah, because I think they had Matt Piscatello on the show too. Mm. This was years ago, bro. This had to be like 20... 17 2018 um yeah he he didn't say it i just want to be clear about that but you're absolutely right he kind of co-signed on that whole mantra that there would be this power gap he co-signed on it i remember him and dealer going back and forth when d with d when d was having his revelations you know what I'm saying? When he was having his bipolar moments and he was actually trying to tell the truth. <laughs> when, he, when he wasn't afraid of being chained in the basement and fed puppy chow all day. He was, when he was trying to, I remember them going back and forth about with D over the bottleneck of the series S and shit like that. So yeah, Cold Blood is right. I just wanted to make clear that he wasn't the one that said it was that dude, Chris Grinnell, who said that. But uh yeah. Isn't it funny? Fonzarelli, he did yep. not tell us anything, bro. Mm -hmm. He's just uh regurgitating what other people are saying yeah. right now that might be a little bit more educated about the matter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'll be surprised, dude, in the tweet who who who, who corrects and checks him. You'll be surprised in the thread. But I, 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 I'm with you a thousand percent. That was where I was about to pivot to. He's saying this because he co-signed or not just him, but people are saying this because they co-sign on the narrative that Xbox was going to destroy the PlayStation. The games would still be fun on PlayStation, right? Remember that shit? Games would still be fun on PlayStation, but Xbox would destroy the PlayStation. And that has not been the case. And so now... Can you please tell me one game that has the ray tracing that activates those 25 T-flops? <laughs> uh, Phantom Dust. Phantom Dust. That has no ray tracing. <laughs> There's the bro. It's nothing. It's the incompetence of Xbox. I'm sorry. To where I, I that's a whole nother podcast. But the incompetence <laughs> of Xbox in this realm. Like you launch. Sean Layton said it himself. The purpose of your exclusives or to make your box look better than what everybody else is doing. And these are the motherfuckers that are releasing 30 frames per second games on their box. If that doesn't speak in confidence, I don't know what else does. I mean, why does this font not even have a blue check mark? If he's uh, engagement baiting so bad, shouldn't he have one? I don't know. I mean, maybe he's hiding it. You know, you can hide your check mark. I don't know if he's. I don't. Is he? Is he a Twitter blue? You 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 can be a Twitter blue member and hide your check mark. I don't know what if he is. 
What'd you say? Why would you do that? Oh, because you don't. I mean, some people do that because they don't want people to know. <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying that's what he's. I don't even know if he's a Twitter Blue member, but some people do that because they don't want you to know that they're getting. You know, because remember when people first was getting their blue check mark and they were like, ah, you're trying to, you know, you want people to think you're important or you're trying to, you're you're trying to engagement, um, you know, trying to engagement bait. So they don't want they don't want people to know that they're doing that because they don't want to get called out on it. Again, I don't I don't know if he's... Uh, geeks comment says fuck fuck the ray tracing. They should focus on the FPS performance of these games on console. True, but yeah. that is not the point I was making right now. I was making the point of the f bullshit they've been telling us about Xbox having fucking untapped power w w w until the ray tracing is active. Mm -hmm. Where it goes to five T flops and bullshit like that. What was that? And, and, and Xbox has hardware based ray tracing versus PlayStation's inferior software, but you know, all this dumb shit that was just misleading people who that stuff mattered to. And I have a problem with this motherfucker here telling <laughs> us something about PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, he's, he's the last person I want to hear talk about uh, technicalities with PlayStation. Yeah. I, I don't agree with his assessment at all. I think it's a saving face assessment. Here's why. First, uh, Exhibit A. Uh, this is Porter Rock's response to him. Uh, Porter Rock says that wouldn't make that wouldn't even make sense. A PlayStation 5 equals 4K 30. PlayStation 5 Pro still 4K 30. Wait, what? Yeah, exactly. Like what? what? Most, most stable 4K 30. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> An uncapped 4K 30. Yeah. So we're getting Dragon's Dogma performance with the PlayStation 5 Pro. I, what, what's the purpose? How do you sell that? Jay Fonzarelli is like, if the CPU is getting a marginal upgrade, don't expect it to do miracles. That this is only what does what, that even mean? Why is he talking like D? <laughs> well, here's the interesting part, Cold Blood. When you say talking like D, D batch actually chimed in. And I couldn't agree more with what he said. Because I read the article that he, I don't think he, I think he read the article, but I don't think he understood it. And I don't think a lot of people understood it because there's a lot of people in that thread regurgitating the same BS. D says, if the leak specs are all we get, big caveat, if that is all we get, the CPU is just a bit better. So unlocked 40 to 45 frames per second on the pro is probably set from What'd you say? What are they talking about right now? Yeah, there's there's specs that just, this article. You got to read the article. The article is based upon something that Digital Foundry did a show on, based upon the latest leaked specs that they got from. Um, I can't remember where they got. I think from Tom Henderson and somebody else had leaked some specs, and then some speculation from AMD about some of the things that they're going to be doing on the APU that's possibly in this console. So it's a purely speculative art. I mean, it's a purely speculative article based upon a speculative podcast that Digital Foundry did. So it, it so again, what, so what are we talking about fantasies right now? That's why D batch said, look, if the leaked specs are all we get, in other words, saying none of this is definitive. Like, what are we, you know, like, what are we talking about here? He's parsing it down here. He's, he, he, he's, he's, he's checking Jay like, look, bro. And look, you can see Jay didn't even respond to him. And I saw this response last night. It was like, go ahead, D. He said, if leaked specs are all we get, the CPU is just a bit better, which is true. So unlocked. You can expect 40 to 45 frames per second on the pro. He said, but if the latest report also talked about here and in the report hints from AMD that the PlayStation 5 Pro has AI upscaling, then yes, it will reach 60 frames per second. He said, we need the hard specs to know for sure. So sitting there talking definitively, I tried to tell y'all, don't expect GTA, 
Like what? D is like, what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? Like, number one, this is all speculative. Number two, talk about the full speculation. Why aren't you talking about when you read this article? If he would have said, look, if he would have said, hey, these elite specs are worrying, yeah, because mm -hmm. they, they don't look like much. Okay, you, yeah. you're still a fucking Xbox fanboy, yeah, but at least you're not saying to us, oh, I told you it's not going to get 60 yeah, exactly. years. Exactly. It, like it's already decided that that is what, what the fucking pro is going to be. Mm -hmm. But see, well, at least D has a head, head still on, on, on his shoulders. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> but see, this is what makes it even worse, uh, Cold Blood. Because this headline is telling you two things. PlayStation 5 Pro shouldn't be expected to deliver double the FPS over base model based on specs alone. However even though the however isn't here but there's a semicolon here which is indicates a however if you know the english language which i i, I don't know if jay fonzer really understood that the new upscaling patent suggests evolution of so they're saying two things if you're looking at the hardware alone based off what we know yeah don't expect 60 off of that however the second part of the headline is, but new upscaling patent suggests evolution of checkerboard rendering, meaning there's possibly new AI checkerboard rendering that is going to allow us to get uh, upscaled 4K 60 frames per second. So what are we talking about here? Number one, the whole conversation is speculative. We don't even know... Uh the, the problem with all of this is we don't even have something comparable Car on PC. Exactly. Exactly. Like, like, do you know of an APU that can deliver all of that on PC? Because I don't. Yeah. Well, it's spec again, it's speculated that this new AMD APU is is going to be in this PlayStation 5 Pro and it's in and, and, and a long with their AI upscaling techniques that are being speculated again off of a patent that that's going to deliver us this new enhanced checkerboard rendering, which I, I don't doubt. But again, it's all speculative. I mean, I think it's fair to say that it's if you believe a PlayStation 5 Pro is coming out, I'm not going to consider you a dummy. I think it's coming out. When? I have no idea. What is it going to be capable of? I have no idea. But to sit there and say, see, you don't don't expect we don't know what this thing is gonna be able to do. I got There's one a more problem. Mm -hmm. I got one more problem with all of this. When the specs of the Series X came out, or oh, everybody was up in arms, yes! Mm -hmm. And at 120 as an option. Yes. Uh where yes. are these people now? Yeah, are these people exactly. Also? Oh, no. Don't expect double the performance. <laughs> something that is literally d double the fucking power of the Series X. Uh, don't expect double performance. Bro. Yeah. I, uh, this is saving I'm face. sorry, but uh, even you uh, were, were an effort for this one. <laughs> you, 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 it's saving face. Because again, like you said, they were on GitHub and, and you know, 120 frames per second. Oh, Garen Greenberg said, for, you know, all you, you were caveating all this information and y'all came to this conclusion that there was going to be 40 to 50 frame deltas. However, when it comes to the PlayStation, oh, you overlook, you even overlook half the fucking headline. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You overlook half no, the headline. On PlayStation, on PlayStation, it's variable. So it's mm. not even uh, 10 T flops, it's nine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You look for all the negatives when it comes here. You you don't you don't even try to spin it, bro. You just ignore it. You when, when focus on half the, the, the title. Split RAM uh, in the Xbox. 
There's, they they did not even react to that. Exactly. That, it, 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 that doesn't even exist. Even though the developers kept bringing it up, they kept saying it was a problem, <laughs> and they kept ignoring it. Yeah, it, it's it, again, it's another thing to highlight that I don't trust any any of the people that said that they had leaked information. Even if it supports something that I believe, I'm not doubling down on it at all. I don't trust them. And these same I will, I will only you? trust a real benchmark. Mm -hmm. A real fucking benchmark of this console running games. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I don't anything I don't, else is speculation right now. I, I don't trust anybody that again sold you on 40 to 50 frame deltas but now want to sell you half <laughs> half of a uh headline as their source information they talk about here and and you know if you're going to go off of speculation and say that it can't do 60 then why aren't you cross balancing that with this speculation that suggests that it would be able to do 60. the new upscaling patent suggests evolution of checkerboard rendering now I can understand if you said in your thing, don't expect native 4K 60. But who, but uh, you know, whatever. But I, I, I see a lot of people just um, trying to save face on a lot of the misinformation that was propagandized at the beginning of this generation. And like I said, I don't have any problem with Fawn, so I won't say this about him directly. I will say that for those that fit under this umbrella, when y'all saw, just like I did, when y'all saw how rabid the fan base was getting, right? And you knew like 2018, I knew. That's why I said to this other content creator, motherfucker, you need to start a podcast. <laughs> like, you know, don't worry about me and me not liking Xbox anymore. Don't worry about me. If I'm lying, I'm flying. I said, you need to start a podcast because I knew how rabid the family, I knew how deeply the hate for PlayStation, how deep rooted it was. And I knew that at the beginning of this generation that that fan base was gonna come out swinging, factual or not, based on facts or not. And not only did I see it, I didn't see it and say, but I saw it and said, hey, look, this will help out your brand because you're, you're an Xbox fan, I'm not. So you need to jump on this. But, I, I, but others saw it and said, you know what? I'm not an Xbox fan. Fuck helping anybody else out. Fuck that water. I'm, <laughs> I'm in. I'm in on this. And that's what happens. I want you to listen to these same people last generation, when there was more hope of a competitive spirit. I mean, it wasn't happening, but it was more hope of it. It was understandable because it was still kind of like fresh on the, okay, this guy just took over, give him some time. It was understandable then. The lies hadn't mounted up yet. And even back then when there was more hope, when it was more plausible to believe that they were gonna try to compete in this arena, these same people was like, bullshit. Y'all mofos ain't gonna be able to do shit. It's trash, it's that. Listen to those same people now. Console's doing worse than what they did last year. They are not making up the gap in cloud or PC. If they were on an upward trajectory where they were making up the gap, trust me, they would keep going. They're not. They're pivoting. They're going to... Yeah, no fights in the chat. Say that again. No fights in the chat. Oh, what's up, Lo-Fi? So, yeah... It, it's you don't you don't go from that extreme to a completely other extreme 
but the consumer base ain't following you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, again, these people are opportunists and they were deceiving a lot of you. Now, again, a lot of you, this stuff doesn't matter. Shout out to the aforementioned Lo-Fi. Lo-Fi isn't like the biggest AAA gamer. He likes a lot of double A in, in, in indie games. Now, I'm not saying he doesn't like triple A at all, but he likes a lot of double A in indie games. So, and then Xbox actually being everywhere suits him. But a lot, of, but most of you, dare I say most of you listening to this that were here on this channel before, that does that's not where you fit in. Y'all wanted the glory days of the Xbox 360 to come back. You just wanted to be embraced with more technology, the technology that was being promised to you. You wanted them to be competitive on the stage because you know, still sharp and still. If they're competitive with um, PlayStation and curating AAA content that keeps PlayStation on its heels, on, on its toes, they're coming out with better content and so are you. And this is, you're just going back and forth, still sharp and still. You know that. I even say, I even argue that a lot of the games that we're playing now are just enhanced ideas from when they when they were competitive. From the 360 PlayStation 3 era. When when did Uncharted start? You could you could argue that Uncharted was was the foster child of a lot of the PlayStation first party uh, uh first party third person exclusives. They're just more polished and, you know, better this and better that. They just, they just been enhanced. And now you could put different stories behind them and put different scenery and settings and stuff behind them. That started back then. The Xbox games that you guys fell in love with and the series that you fell in love with, they come from the 360 generation. A lot of them come from OG, but that got enhanced in the 360 generation. So when there is feasible competition, still sharp and still, y'all know that that's what y'all wanted Xbox to get back to. And you were sold this dream that Xbox would get back to that when that, they were, they were trying, but number one, they weren't competent enough to try and be successful in it. And two, always looming in the back burner was, okay, we're gonna try we're gonna give it a shot, but we're really focused on just distributing software everywhere. These rumors aren't new. We've been we, we've been battling rumors about Xbox going third party since fucking 2018. So of course these rumors aren't new because this this isn't something new that they. Th it's always been on the back burner as the safety net. Phil, we'll give this a shot. And if this somehow magically creates a better scenario than our master plan, then we'll, we'll, we'll roll with it. But what we really would like to do is this third party. Sachi is a software and services guy. He doesn't like the whole console spending hundreds of millions of dollars routinely to sell you a box. Fuck that. Let's, why can't we use that money and make a whole bunch of double A games like Matt Booty had indicated? Bill, I think, tried to stay in this lane, but he just wasn't competent enough to, for the fight. As, as as they say, his 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 arms were too short to box with the gods. <laughs> and 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 your comment on Geek the Sneaks comment. What did he what did he say? Hold on, let me see. He says, uh, what I want them to bring all games to PC and to hell with consoles. Um, yeah, I think Geek knows my position on that. I did for Xbox, yeah, sure. For PlayStation, no. Absolutely not. Um I care no, about the I, I I I also got an opinion on this. Mm-hmm. If you can if you can make a PC that can run 4K60 at $500, yes, please. Fuck consoles at that point. I, I would be with you, bro. But not at 
almost uh, 3,000 for an awesome experience now. Nah. Yeah. Uh-uh. yeah that's, <laughs> that's the luxury Most of the people console. What that shit, bro. Yep. And see, here's what I think we're not. No, even a spec PC is fucking expensive at $1,000, $1,500. Yeah. So you live in a fantasy world, bro. I think we we we're looking at these consoles and we're not realizing that a these consoles bring AAA capabilities in homes where they're normally not feasible. Like without a console, like Cold Blood said, you're spending thousands of dollars or more on a PC, the monitor to take advantage of the PC, you know, all that shit, right? Where with a standardized TV, the power of that box is just plug and play and it's obtainable in every in, in an average home where you can just spend $500 and you ain't got to go tweak stuff. You ain't got to worry about all these settings, uh, you know, advanced settings, advanced visuals, all this other stuff. It makes it more feasible for the average home. Without the console, most of these AAA games just aren't, they're not achievable outside of like, you know, a NVIDIA GeForce Now or something. But these, but these services aren't fully fleshed out and they're not obtainable to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Um, the console right now, today, is the most obtainable way. That will change in the years down the road, but right now it's the most obtainable way for you to get the top of the line AAA experience in just about every home. You... Yeah. Geek, uh, yeah. Uh, make the whole inflation go away. Which it ain't. <laughs> and maybe then we can talk about your fantasy again. Because yeah. right now, with, with what we hear, these 50, 90s, 50, 80s are going to be up, upwards $2,000 just for the GPU. Yeah, you're like, not, you're, you're not getting come it. on, bro. 2000 yeah. for only the GPU without the CPU case and everything else. Motherboard and shit. And, and, and so I yeah, think you ain't building nothing. And <laughs> this is where we got to look outside of our own use, user case too, because um, in large swarths of the United States, again, that's the largest console market in large portions of the United States. Motherfuckers don't even have internet good enough to download games. They got to take their <laughs> shit Bro, they got to take their shit to the local GameStop, <laughs> their consoles, the local GameStops in middle USA, mid like Idaho and, you know, where, where you know, I guess it's hard to run Kate fiber through or whatever. They got to take their games, their consoles to the local GameStop and use their Internet service because they're paying a shit ton of money for the Internet and they just charge people for it. Like a lot of them don't even have enough internet to download fucking games, bro. Like the console, it's just not feasible to go away yet. Not only because of that, but because it's the easiest way to put triple the AAA gaming experience uh, in the, uh, in, in the home. And when you make it too expensive to, to well, you got to build a PC and then you got to deal with all the PC updates and not just the PC update, but uh, uh, the, the PC settings and shit like that. That's, that's not plug and play enough. And then developers, because there's a whole bunch of boxes in a home, developers will then make sure when they port that game, they specifically cater it to the box. To where with a PC game, it's like, okay, here goes the settings. Have fun. Best of luck to you. Figuring out which one you got. Yeah. 
So, yeah, the the, the I, I'm a cloud gamer. That's how I, I mainly game. Um, and we know what? you love Xbox. Oh shit! Uh, yeah, I, lo- I love X Cloud, man. <laughs> I love it. It is the best. Uh, yeah. Of course I- it is. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, and then the, the the thing about quality, you gotta understand. What y'all keep forgetting is when it comes to AAA games, these m- mofo's they're not spending two three hundred million dollars to make AAA games. Um, that are at the quality of these exclusives, right? Or they're not they're they're not they're not QCing these games at that level if everything is just multi-plat why because you got for two reasons number one you got parallel development parallel development is i gotta make sure that this works across the board so fuck it i'm gonna cut this out because it ain't working and we told our shareholders that we're coming out in may of 2024 we've already delayed this i'm not delaying this fuck it we said so we, we're cutting that out we're cutting that out we're cutting that out you got to develop to the lowest common denominator when the game is an exclusive and you got a deadline to make and it's got to work on everything so parallel development is why you're seeing a lot of these multiplat games go down and down more and more in quality secondly the fact that i got to sell that 500 dollars box even though it's a lot cheaper than the pc it's still 500 dollars. so i still got to sell this motherfucker it has to be a system seller so it was going through checks and balances that even the biggest triple-A game, multiplayer games don't go through. That's why they say the Nintendo and the, and, the, and the PlayStation Studios are the best. There's a reason why they keep... There's a reason why that year after year, the PlayStation and the Nintendo exclusives dominate the Game Awards. There's a reason year after year, the biggest selling games are their triple-A games. Even though... They're only on one platform for the most part. Now, I'm saying like a Boulder's Gate might edge them out, but I'm saying collectively, when you look at the games, they're, they're the ones that dominate the conversation, that dominate the bulk of the lines, are the ones that are on PlayStation and Nintendo. There's a reason for that. It's just a, there's just a, a sense of urgency around the quality of those games that just isn't elsewhere because the multi-plat providers they're looking at it like look I, I got access to the billions of pcs i got access to xbox playstation and nintendo like this ain't got to be the greatest fucking game ever we got so, we got a, so much of a wider margin of error that you know we could give you a decent experience as long as it's glossy fuck it where PlayStation and Nintendo ain't got that because their games are used as catalysts to sell the box. So I I don't believe in the police put put the games everywhere because you're going to kill the quality um, because of parallel development and just a sense of urgency. What are you saying, Cold Blood? Can we blame xCloud performance on Stadia dosage? (laughs) xCloud, no. Well, unfortunately, we can't. Not, not, well, not on Stadia. You call, call it out enough. You, you, you didn't criticize it enough. What, xCloud? Oh. Yeah. Oh, man. That geek, geek knows. <laughs> well, that's when they love me, geek. Geek and low. Well, I don't know if Lofi was around, you know, for the earlier Stadia doses days. But that's when they love me, y'all. They Oh, they used to love that Xbox hate back in the day. Me and Jack get put them numbers up for the stadium number show and show Xbox at the bottom as far as engagement. They love that shit. Not now they not now they hate me. That was how they how'd I go geek back to that Mike Jones Mike Jones. Back then you didn't want me. Now I'm hot, y'all all on me. It was the reverse. <laughs> Mike Jones. We always say the Xbox fanboys aren't doing enough. You didn't do enough for X Club, bro. 
I didn't do enough for what? I heard that Mike Jones. I had to come in here. Uh, right? yeah, man. Hey, so what's up, Lo Fi? <laughs> Mike Jones. Yeah. What's up, brother? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they used to love like, me, man, that? back in the day. Yeah, they man. Lo- yeah. Then, uh, hey, hey, Lofa. Yeah, well, well after this, then, uh, were, you, were you free or you still need some some time? Uh, after this? No, I'm free after this. I got, I got some time today. Okay. So, uh, like the, uh, you can the, finally the, fix all the dog shit that you've been dealing with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard y'all had some trouble here in the Discord, bro. Like the names thing is driving. I like I know it's it's got to be a setting ever since they updated Discord. But like how your whole name is showing, and I can't get our names to show. That shit drives me crazy. Oh, on the uh, 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 oh, oh sure yeah I can help you out with that. That's easy. Okay. That's uh, easy. But yeah. Uh yeah they 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 used to hate me. Now we 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 uh. We called out X Cloud all the time. And like X Cloud was like a punching bag, and and and, I, and really what blew the channel up. For those of y'all that remember, what blew the Stadia Doses channel up was when Jazz Gordon came on there and said that um, who was that? Fucking um, when he said Destiny was better on X Cloud, <laughs> I said okay. Let's let, 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 let's check this out. And I showed it on XCloud and then I showed it on, on Stadia and it was like no comparison. And I had yeah. I had diehard Xbox people calling me up, bro. That's what I knew we 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 heard that dude. They were calling me up like, why'd you do that to Jazz, man? You ain't here. <laughs> they were like you you didn't have to do that to him, man. Why you they like they were legit upset. Like, man, why you do that, man? I said he shouldn't have put the article up. He shouldn't put it up. You ain't got to. You ain't got to lie to kick it. If you prefer what X Cloud is going to do, fine. But do do not lie. You, you have to defend Stadia so much if you are so uh, uh, confident in it. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't understand what that means. But <laughs> so you so you're gonna let somebody lie? <laughs> we just did. A, we just did a whole segment when we was when we was killing Jay Fonzarelli <laughs> because he's the stadium is better. Why? Why even proved it, prove it then? Well, the same reason we just proved that Jay Fonzarelli was, uh, you know, he was sitting there super capping because you know I trounced the lies. I, I told y'all at the beginning of this. I do not. I do not like when people make up shit to deceive people purposefully and that's exactly what so he was doing you got you say? Nuts, right what's that what i can hear you go ahead Hello? Hello? can you hear me yeah i can hear you what the fuck is most talking about you can't hear me no because you were talking while i was talking i couldn't hear you <laughs> <laughs> it's not a horrible concept but uh, not a bug <laughs> no, what, what, no, what were you saying? No, I said, so you were triggered. Yes. What was I triggered? I don't know triggered, if you God damn it. No, that's what I triggered, said. I just like- I said, was I triggered? <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <laughs> calm the fuck down. Uh, was I, are you triggered, motherfucker? God damn it. I said, was, was, was I triggered? Mm. I wouldn't say I was triggered. I just saw I just saw the horse shit. And I gotta be honest with y'all. For those of y'all that don't know, I'm not I'm not the biggest jazz fan. It, it has something to completely it has something to do with the broadband bullies. I'm not I'm not a big jazz fan. Fan boy off stadium, right? No, no. It has no, it has something to do with some bullshit. Yes. He tried with Yes, his. absolutely was. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> J- J- jazz knows what I'm talking about. He knows exactly what I'm talking about, man. We, we we got a history. He tried to pull some bullshit on Z. I know. I think I talked to y'all about it over Crackdown Three when when Z was like, um, you know, we we heard rumors that you know Crackdown Three's development, you know, was going through some troubles, and he sat there and said, "No, I played Crackdown Three. The game is just fine." And I mean, you stupid. And he he took what we, what Z was saying on the podcast out of context, and he was running through Twitter about around with it, and. I called him out on it and he blocked me and uh, I said, okay, 
Let me, let, me, let me put his name on the naughty list. So the next time we and I was I was just waiting for him to slip up, which he did. But his whole <laughs> destiny is better on X Cloud bullshit. I said, okay, I got you. I got you, pimping. I got you, brother. <laughs> but the best. What? Yeah. Um, no, he said. Yeah, he said. No, no, no. He said destiny on X Cloud. I can't. I forgot how he phrased it. Nah. But he was trying to say that destiny on X Cloud way back then, when it was only thirty frames per second. I think the image quality was four eighty or some shit. <laughs> he said it was better. And uh, yeah, we had we had, we had to murder him on that one. We had to kill him on that one. <laughs> KC cracking up. Destiny is better. Hey, bro, you was getting. At the, was I getting 1440p? I think at the time I was getting 1440p, 60 frames per second on Destiny on Stadia. This this shit was 480, 30 frames per second. I think on the phone on X Cloud, bro. Hey, are all the 2Ks on Cloud now? I don't know. Yeah, on Black Knot Gaming, and I think Boosteroid. Got some of oh, them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure not. Booster Roy got them. <laughs> I know they're coming to uh, GFN. <laughs> oh, Are they? I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. That's the last holdout. They yeah, like take like take two. Oh, yeah. They need to cut that shit out, bro. They need to stop it. You said Grand Blue on fan <laughs> or GF and yeah, yeah. I, I I'm trying to get access to. I wonder is is your Sean is your Grand Blue data transferable? Like, can you go? Can, is it like cross progression? Can you go back and forth? He says, mm -hmm. <laughs> Geek to Sneak says I blame Stadia dosage. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Because it's not even uh, cr uh, crossplay. Yeah, I'm wondering if, because you know, you get that code and shit. There's that code. The, um, and I wonder if that. That has nothing to do with uh, your progression. Uh, that sucks. But, um,. Yeah, man. So what? Oh shit! No, we over three hours. I got, I got, I got work to do. Um, but yeah, thank y'all everybody for coming through. We got to work on some things, take care of some shit. Um, Cold Blood, are you streaming today? Or you taking a break? Hmm, for how long am I supposed to stream? You, you determine that, good brother. If you, even if you do stream, you don't have to stream today. Even if you do decide to stream today. And you did what eight hours on Saturday? Yeah, Jeez. but some of it was uh, was also was breaks. breaks. Yeah. yeah, but I still it's a long time. Um, yeah, if you are going to stream, let me know and we can. Uh, I'll set that That's up. Long stream. Yeah, yeah. He says that Sean L said stream Stadia. I wish I could. <laughs> GFN and RIP Stadia were the best two <laughs> options. I yeah, that. I just put a picture of a graveyard. Oh shit. Outriders. <laughs> He's in Stream Stadia Outriders. Ain't no way, boy. Ain't no way. Ain't no way, boy. Yeah, that, that didn't help. Just use the old version. It looks about the same. Use the yeah, the, now that ain't no cap in here, bro. Yeah, that that stayed that pissed. I remember I was when I was streaming with Storm. <laughs> we was and Storm was extra bad. Who was it? That motherfucker, Jerry. Uh, shout out to him, man. I ain't mad at them no more. They was just on some weird shit back then. Uh, I forgot what he does now. But Jerry, um, I was telling people how to get better visual quality from from it and some shit that I did and made it look better. And Jerry had did the show. Yeah, man. Uh, the, none of that. None of that's gonna work, or some some shit he was doing. I don't know. He was he. What it was is there was little different factions, and 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 he Jerry 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 was just trying to do his do his work for his little faction he was with, whatever. Um, but I remember me and Storm was 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 chatting about it, and Storm was like, "Yeah, man, I, and he was hot. He was mad at that Outriders because me and him did a show before launch where Square Enix had dropped footage." 
of what they were saying that the 4k version was going to look like versus the 1080 version and we was like yeah man this shit is going to be fire bro and that game launched on stadia and that was hot doo-doo suit <laughs> <laughs> and i said it live on air like that's what i was saying i was like man ain't nobody trying to cap it's just like if you got the game and you want to play it and stadia is the only way that you can play it on here's how you can make it look better you know what I'm saying? But uh yeah, that 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 I think that experience is where it was like well, I know for a fact that that experience soured some people internally and they were like, "Look, we really got to get this tool set together and shit like that to make e porting here easier cuz this this is crazy." But um yeah, interesting stuff. But that said, he said the Stream Connect was the only saving grace. Yeah, that was that was that was fly. Stream Connect is always fly. And I would love to see um GFN or somebody else enact that. That was definitely dope. Cyberpunk played the best on Stadia when it first came out. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was crazy. They they couldn't even they couldn't even really capitalize on that. He said, good old Stadia Civil War days. Yeah, I mean, I laugh at it now. Because what here's, here, I'm, I'm going to spill some tea right here. I'm going to spill some tea. Because a lot of those people, they, they've they stopped making content or whatever. Um, I've always been straightforward and brash about my takes on stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I because I come from this era, like... I don't think a lot of people in the cloud community was used to that. They was used to the sitting there and pa -da -pa 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 -pa, and having the elevator talking the elevator music and all of the shit and everybody just just being nice to each other. Um, Lo-fi gets it because some you know some of his uh, <laughs> cloudy thoughts have gotten contentious. But way back then in oh, the yeah. beginning, it was all about pa -da -da -pa -pa -pa. yeah, man. I like playing this game. Yeah, I, I pressed the jump button and I landed on the other surface. It's all great. I'm like, yo, what the hell's going on here? Now we gotta bring some, we gotta bring some life to this shit. You know what I'm saying? So, and I brought over some of that that crumb side energy, which was cool. But then there would be times where I would disagree with people. Like, no lie, I bullshit y'all now. I'm not gonna name any names, but I was on a podcast with somebody, and the motherfucker hyperventilated, bro just because me and that person had a different opinion. We had a difference of opinion and they were hyperventilating. Like we got off camera and they, oh my God. I was like, yo, what? I was like, all I, all, we just have a- yeah, Some people do that, man. Yeah. It's, it's wild. It's not that- have any other ideas than I have. Exa yeah. have exact exactly. And so when we got to a point in the stadium community where people were like, I don't like, what I'm getting versus those that were like, yo, we do like what we're getting. We're not saying it's perfect. I think one, like, like lo-fi just illustrated, there was an expectancy that we were all going to band together. Like the people on us, the gopledangers on us, how they was holding hands all across the sea. And we were in unison going to say, oh, we're done with Stadia. And when that didn't happen, that just caused the friction or whatever. And little different factions were formed or whatever. And But it was mainly one person that was behind all that shit. I'm not going to say anything. Mainly one person that was behind the friction. And they was causing discourse. Like I would be talking about something that had nothing to do with another group. And I know for a fact that this person was going back to the different groups. Yeah, MM is talking about you. MM is talking, you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, here we go. Um, but yeah, I patched things up with um, who was that? Ace and them. But that's why I said Jerry. I, I got no problem with Jerry. Um, they was it was just it was just some weirdo tactics because they were they felt like that they had to defend their faction because they thought I was against them, which was silly. It was somebody trying to instigate stuff behind the scenes. But um, Cloud Gaming Extreme, that's their name. You know, Cloud Gaming Extreme with Ace and all them. Ace is the homie. I ain't got no problem. I never had a problem with Ace. It was Ace and um, uh, what's his name? Virtual. He's, he goes by Virtual Cloud, but he was Stadia something before. Those are the ones that made me want to do Stadia content. You know what I'm saying? So 
I was always cool with them. But yeah, there was the, the, like Sean said, the good old Stadia, <laughs> the good old Stadia Civil War days. Yeah, that's that's what that was all about. It was like you know, we felt like we should bring some energy and some, and, and, and some enthusiasm to the conversation. Like we just didn't want to do the elevator talk music. Nothing against the people that did do it, but there, there was enough people doing that shit. We wanted to spice it up. You know what I mean? Um, and I think the elevator people didn't like us doing that like they would always hit me up you don't have to be you don't have to be so animated when you, you know like and i'm like man do, the do, elevator do, people is boring to watch bro it, thank it's you like what are you even doing well some man? people like that shit low. making noise with your mouth yeah some people like that yeah they like that they like that shit you know what i'm saying like shout yeah, out to them yeah. you know i but i, I do my I, i've never went to somebody and said i don't like what you do you should do it the way that i think you should do no you do your own thing you know there's some of them elevator music marks they they they're a hundred thousand times bigger than our platform and that's fine that's cool you do your thing just don't come over here with with your stuff that's all because it ain't you know and trying to make us like you trying to don't come over here with that trash yeah that that that, that garbage no (laughs) no it's, it's it's all cool but yeah, they, but, but, uh, behind the Stadia factions, believe it or not, it was one entity. It was one entity that started it all. That started it all. And, and they, they, they they weaseled their way through the different groups and was just starting shit with everybody and stuff like that. Um, I had one situation where I had somebody that was like a huge supporter of mine. They were sitting there telling me how they love my shit and all this other stuff. And, you know, part of the discord and they voted for me, this and that. And then they hooked up with, they hooked up with this source and all of a sudden they hated my guts, man. I was like, yo, what happened? Yeah. It's, a lot of moles out there, bro. Yeah. 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 So, but those were, those were fun times. I would, I would never take them back. If, if I were to do anything differently, um, What I would do is to say, I would have focused more on, look, y'all. Bro, if I could do it again, I would have talked more shit. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would have yeah. handed up. I would have, and, and I would have. I iso- we we, we would have isolated ourselves even more because, like I said, <laughs> like some of the crazy shit, like bro, I had one situation where. I had to, some cat was going around saying crazy shit and I work with governments. That's what I do. And they were saying crazy shit that I know that if the wrong person got a hold of and they would actually report to a government entity that they would cause a lot of heartburn for us. And I literally had to, I've never had to do this on the crumb side, bro. Never. I mean, we called each other motherfuckers, threatened people. Yeah, wait till I see you at at, uh, at PAX. I'm going to whoop your ass. I mean, all types of, on the crumb side, you got, you had people pull out guns live on air, cold blood, <laughs> what up, crazy ass zealots pulling out. I've never had to talk behind the scenes with somebody on some legal shit. Like literally, I had to pull out my legal hat and be like, yo, you can't you say this or bro. these are the legal repercussions. <laughs> like it was crazy. It was it was different over there. It was really different. But um, you know, I wouldn't tell him. Only thing I would do more is I would say, you know what? I'm hopeful I would have said more. Cause I've said it, but I didn't say, I, I would have said it more. I would have said, you know what? Um, anything's possible with this platform. And we gotta be honest, Google does have a track record. And I get that this is a service and we're hopeful, but I, I will say I am hopeful though, because they got everything lined up in the right, tra- you know, in the right trajectory amongst their peers. So hopefully they're, they're grounded and they understand that they're not going to be able to compete with PlayStation and Xbox right now. But if they continue to grow, they'll be up there with their peers and they're going to have something because I, I bet you, I mean, I could be wrong. They're looking at what, they're, you know, everybody's getting access to now because of the lawsuits, and they're like, "Fuck!" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now we're getting those Xbox games. We're gonna get them, but beth- oh shit! Like, fuck. Maybe, maybe not. But it's all interesting stuff, nonetheless. Um, 
Shout out to Stadia still killing something. It's all of you shit. We literally lost five people in an instant. Oh, this dude is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, KC, they was hyperventilating, bro. And nothing against them. Like before, I I mean, bro, we would go on. I was telling Cold Blood this. I've never seen now people would dox you and they would dox you in the um Doriega. You said what I missed. I came at the end. God damn, Doriega. <laughs> you go you gotta watch the VOD, brother. Shout out to Doriega. Um people would dox you on the crumb side, definitely. Like if you said some real fucked up shit or you threatened oh, somebody. Yeah, go out of the way. What say that getting lo-fi? Yeah, they're gonna go out of their way. That's oh the yeah, 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 yeah. Like, they're gonna dox you. They're gonna dox you. Take yeah. a picture, picture of something, and they're like, "Oh, that's where the, I know exactly where that is." <laughs> and they tell everybody where you're at. They're gonna dox you, but in the cloud community, because I remember one time somebody had said something in the the Reddit, the, the Stadia Reddit, and I said, "Oh, let me have some fun with this shit," because I was like, they're, "They're talking mad shit." Like they used to talk mad shit about me particularly or they love fucking with me and i never would respond to it like people would send me shit and i'm like let, let them have a fun so one day i went over to the stadium reddit and i started fucking with them right and i was kicking their ass over there they couldn't handle it and they, yeah. they you know and then the stadium moderators would ban me for a day or two i get it i understand trust me i've been kicked out of everywhere i've been at you know for for, for going back and forth with people and trolling people um but what they would do over there, bro, is even if you just said something like, well, I don't agree with this, they would go into the Reddit option where you can give a suicide alert. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and they would hit the suicide alert a notification to Reddit on you, and then you would get these emails like, look, man, if, if you're looking at, it's not that bad, and somebody warned us it's that you okay. want yeah they send a picture of a cat kittens hanging on the bro i was like what are y'all what <laughs> y'all doing there. this yeah they yeah it was it, it, it's a it was it was definitely a different breed over there but i wouldn't trade anything for the world i think i just like i said in my message i would have said more because based upon my experience i've always said look we're not in the boardrooms we don't know what abc could do but from all indications this is what we have um but I would have said more. Look, you know what? Google does have a track record. We don't know for sure, but you know, I can say this. This is very promising. This looks promising. That looks great. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully Google understands what they have and they don't give up on it. You know what I mean? So, so says, they still do that shit. Man, Sean I missed says. out. I missed out on the whole skull and bones conversation over here. Crash. Uh, yeah, we didn't. Yeah, I, you talking about? No, yeah, I, we didn't talk about it. <laughs> it's you like, talk, man, yeah, that is yeah. probably the best four A mobile game I've ever played uh, on PC. Four A shit, four A Yeah, he said. Doriega says the angry Xbox chat ambassadors. If they st- if that's still a thing, oh, they probably still do that. Over- yeah, they probably do that over there too. Bro, I love the console war. Yeah. I do. I really do. I mean, as a PC player, it's just like, yeah, y'all fight. I want to watch. <laughs> I mean, I think but it's you great get discussions. More, that, that, that is even more laughable that you get involved in that shit all the time. <laughs> uh, it's, it, I, it's, it's a great discussion because competition is always, you know, we talk about, this is what I'm saying. And people, uh, uh, we, you, I'm so above that. Uh, I'm so above the console war. It's so petty, but it's a competition. It's like we we talk yeah, about competition just, about. It's everything. funny to me when people get so serious about it, though. Now the you know fanboying is like ridiculous. Life and death. The fanboying is ridiculous. That's the aspect of it that that can get crazy. Yeah. <laughs> But the console war itself, it's a marketing term. Like people think the console sure. war, like some 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 YouTuber made no, these people are console. No, that's bullshit. The console war. Dude, the whole point buying the brand is it's like like it's a status symbol. So like you want to feel like you got some kind of status. So like the console war just feeds into that. 
Well, no, well, it's no. Made the, the, pictured a lot of times. Actually, the console war is just the measuring of the competition between the different consoles. Like, you would get execs that come on stage at E3 and say, well, you know, in this console war, we're doing this, we're doing that. It just got taken by some fanboys, you know, or those that thought they were b bigger and better and above it all, and they, it got repurposed into a whole different meaning. But the console war was PlayStation... I mean, I mean, Nintendo versus the Genesis. You know, uh, um, Atari 2600 versus the ColecoVision. That's, that's the, like, and who's doing better? Who's getting more saturation? Um, that's why ESA even made the E3 based off the console war to help the uh, platform holders leverage themselves in the console war and to help third-party publishers take advantage of the console war. As you want to go show your new console and the benefits of it, now there's a place that third-party publishers can go to and, and market their products and, and, and sell you 100 million shipments in this quarter. So the, the, the console war um, itself is just a discussion of the, you know, the different platforms and how they're doing and, and getting themselves in each home. The fanboy <laughs> wars, that's where the, you know, the motherfuckers are like, you know, or holding flags and shit like that and going, going at each other's throats. Yeah, those are the people that are fun to troll. Yeah. Yeah, and I and, and I always thought it was entertaining. I always thought it was entertaining, um, and I don't mind it as long as we like take a time out and we go to the side and we just start. You know, let's let, let's share some facts now. You know what I mean? Let's let's st let's start off our conversations with sharing the actual facts. Now I'm gonna give you my interpretation of the facts because I wear blue, or I give you my interpretation because I wear green, or I give you my interpretation because I wear red. You know, I don't mind that. It's all perspective. Yeah, it's all perspective. I don't mind that, but when motherfuckers start lying, you know, and you know, d uh, what, dude? The worst is when you're 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 loud and proud doing your thing, and somebody tells you about how it sucks, and you're like, wait a minute. Oh yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you want to suck. Do that. You gonna do that? Yeah, they, I mean, they, I mean, they gonna do that. Oh hell yeah, yeah. That's where you get the fan. Yeah, and I, and I remember when I first came on the scene, that was the shit that I had to deal with, um, where people were like, "Why do you like Xbox?" And I'm like, "Well, because I like this, that, and the other." Oh, it don't mean no fucking sense. Bro, when, I, when I came to Stadia, I didn't even consider all the little console war stuff. Dude. I was oh, like, yeah. I'm gaming, and everybody's oh. talking shit, and I'm like, bro, I, yeah, I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> like, leave me alone. Phil Spencer did that. When Phil Spencer, because Stadia made sure not to call out anybody by name. They understood that. Yeah. Like yeah. Phil Harrison and Jack Buser, even though they're over at Google, they had lineage over at PlayStation. And they were they they established relationships that were based off of those play their PlayStation years. Like that's why they were getting those NIS games that Xbox couldn't get <laughs> based off of those relationships. So they didn't want to mention PlayStation. And then they didn't want to mention Xbox. They just said consoles and hardware. They talked to when they did talk to little shit, they were talking about hardware. You know what I'm saying? Where Xbox specifically said we don't trust Amazon and Google. They're like they went at Stadia. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's why there's so much animosity, at least from the Xbox crowd, about Stadia. Yeah, I just man, looking back on it, and even at the time, honestly, dude, I always felt like when Phil Spencer was doing that, it was because like, yeah, because you know your cloud sucks. <laughs> you know, like we hadn't seen it yet at that yeah. point. It hadn't been released when he had said that, but dude, yeah, still to this day, your cloud sucks. Like, they clearly are taking advantage of. They were taking advantage of the the fallout from the the bad press. A lot of it was self inflicted. Not all of it, but a lot of it was self inflicted from Stadia. Like I think if Stadia from the very beginning said this is how this shit works, instead of letting months fester where people thought that every single gang was going to be in Stadia Pro, that could have helped out. And then if they would have did a better job in working with the press, I think they, they could have had a better launch. But then there were just some things that were out of their control. Uh, yeah, that, I don't know. It's a just it's a weird thing, dude, because like he was talking all that. But meanwhile, he's 
he was greasing the wheels with GFN. And from what I heard, uh, there was going to be PC games, you know, Windows games that were coming to Stadia. They had already been demoing it. Behind oh, the yeah. Scenes, testing that out. Oh, yeah. So the bring your like, own games. Yeah. They were working on that shit, yeah, bro. Yeah, all this stuff's been going on in the background, you know, for a long time without us even hearing about it. Like Xbox reaching out, yeah, to, you know, making their deals ahead of time. But uh, yeah, I don't know. That whole thing was just real strange the way it all ended. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I he says Doriega said kudos to Stadia for the refunds. Even the ref- the oh. refunds were good, but they were a little janky. <laughs> they were because I didn't like the points thing. A little bit. Oh yeah, that's uh, yeah. Nah, that was hella bad. I don't but, know. I got a bunch of money back. Yeah, most most people got a lot of mo- got their money back, but people like myself, who was trying to take advantage of, you know, you oh, spend yeah, so, yeah, you spend you so many points point. and you get the the uh-huh, points back instead thing. of getting refunded the cash, you got refunded. And points. Yeah, I think I got like three hundred dollars <laughs> in points or whatever the hell it was. You know, like something crazy. But I mean, in the long run, it ended up working out for me because I got all this cash back, and then like I just bought the games again, and then I had money. Yeah, the, yeah it all worked out for me. Nobody, you know, nobody else was, was doing that though. Like if, if Xbox. Oh yeah. Yeah, if Xbox like decides that they're going to, I, I don't think they're going to do it this generation coming up. But uh, you I mean, know, they dude, made, I've it, had consoles in the past that just go under. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you don't like, get shit for nothing. it. Yeah, you're you're done. Yeah. You're done. Ooh, That's yeah, it. When it was gone, done. second the Dreamcast, the GameCube, Dreamcast. Yeah. Yep. On live, I already went through this with the cloud once. <laughs> yeah, Geek said I got some PC. Yeah, a lot of motherfuckers. They were yeah, man. They were they were uh, reing up. Getting their shit together because of that those refunds. Yeah, uh, yeah. I remember the Stadia Geek, Stimmy, I remember yeah. Geek getting his graphics <laughs> card. Somebody tried to somebody in his, his apartment complex tried to steal his graphics card. Oh man, the yeah, Stadia and, uh, Stimmy. That is right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh hell yeah, man. <laughs> shit. My one month of pro back. Um, they work, and the crazy thing about it was, and I could have done it too, but I didn't. I, I was like, I don't need to do that. Motherfuckers were getting Stadia Pro refunded back, and they were getting um. What'd you say? I did. Yeah, that's, I, that's you, had call, you, had, you had to contact customer service if you didn't. Some people were getting Ubisoft that's, refunded back too. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They they refunded me my Ubisoft, and Ubisoft that's still crazy, games. bro. Now I didn't get my. Yeah. It didn't. It was some of it wasn't automatic, but my. But fuck Ubisoft. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't get. I didn't yeah. get my Ubisoft refunded back. I could have called though, but I, I was like, nah, I don't. I don't. I don't need all that. Yeah, dude. I, I don't know, man. It. Yeah. So to come back to Lo-Fi's point about uh, a console being a status symbol, what does that make it? Uh, what does make that the Xbox? What is that? The status symbol. <laughs> that's a that's a status symbol of champions, my friend. No, a bomb on welfare. That's oh damn! <laughs> a bomb on welfare. God it. damn! <laughs> yeah, I, 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 again, and people be thinking I'm attacking Xbox gamers. If y'all like Xbox games and y'all like Game Pass, I don't care, man. I don't like. For instance, I, I like, you couldn't I like give it. me. I like it all, man. You couldn't give me money to play games on the Switch because I can't do thirty frames, bro. I just can't do it. That's me. Yeah. I am. I do not denigrate the power that the Switch has. None of that shit. So I don't care. My thing is, is that if you're gonna sit here and talk about that you're gonna battle in, in this arena and you you're taking money because of it, I'm not expecting you. To just stand around the ring and not throw a punch. Like when you gonna fight? And that's what happened with Xbox. Xbox kept making these promises that they were gonna fight in this lane. And when they when they did finally throw a punch, it just it there was no effort behind it. Dude, they, I, uh, you just, I just a thought just popped into my head, man. Like what's that? The the whole you know we had the reputation of Stadia being the dad the dad game you know. Mm-hmm. Thing, the dad gamers but it's yep. like dude 
uh, you just tapped into a whole market of gamers that have money to spend. Yeah. But uh, I don't know why they... I, I, there's so many reasons I don't know why they dropped the ball. But it's like, like when you think about PlayStation and Xbox, their, co their consumers, they don't know who's holding the wallet. And they don't care. They're just, mm -hmm. even if you have to go to your parents to get the money. But when you were talking about Stadia, like, you you probably could guarantee 90% of the people playing. Oh, hell yeah. Had money to yeah. spend. <laughs> you that's know what why I, mean? I was like, so like, confident. Because, and that's what drew me to Stadia. Cobra was like, oh my gosh, I tried to steer the conversation. It didn't work. <laughs> but this is the thing that drew me to Stadia. It went right back. Yeah. <laughs> And real quick, and, 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 and Sean put something funny in the chat. I'm going to address oh, you, Sean. I, I don't care what we're talking to you about, really. <laughs> um, um, the community, the Stadia community was so fucking smart, bro. Like, uh, forget all the weird shit that, that you don't agree with me shit. They understood the technology, and they explained the shit better than any person that claims to be in a... Good. Yeah, then Google. Yeah, then Google. Yeah, of course. And like all the shit that they did, like the, what's that? The, the Stadia program that you use to calibrate Stadia, and the, the 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 just the shit that they because a lot of these people are Google supporters. Their own achievement sites. Yeah, exactly, bro. Like the support behind them, the the Stadia community was built upon fucking geniuses, bro. And they were looking at this platform and they were like, yes, there is so much here under the hood that if y'all keep pursuing this and stay on this trajectory, ain't nothing touching this. And I was just so amazed because I just really had joined the community and was getting involved because I liked the platform. And I was like, I'm just looking for other people that are talking the truth about the platform. I did not ex ever expect Stadia to be my number one way to game. It was getting with the community, talking to them, and just sitting back and listening and like, oh, and getting schooled on how this cloud shit work. Like that information I got from them is invaluable. Um, bro. And there was so much money in that community. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It really I mean, it, you're talking you're it's all the parents. It's the people holding the wall. It's the parents, it's the tech enthusiasts. And the people and engineers, because because you got to again, a lot of the people that were in Stadia were Google nerds, and a lot of right. the Google nerds they work in Silicon Valley. They are the they are the engineers and shit, man. So Google, oh my God, they just don't know what they had, bro. They don't know what yeah. they had accidentally and, and organically, but yeah, exactly. It, it is what it is. It is but what hey, it man, is. Here's, an, here's something we can get so we can get off the topic of Stadia. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think about NVIDIA? They've uh, they've they've already stopped production on an older graphics card, and then uh, they announced that they're all in on AI. So hmm. how do you how do you think that's gonna affect um, gaming? Me it's going to affect gaming because I don't think I they're going to just halt making all graphics cards. Or something. I, I don't know that's going to be a long, like, either. yeah, that's that's a long. I mean, AI is their number one business now, yeah, no, but they make sure it's yeah. making more money than anything. That yeah, else that's it's their number one, but like, yeah, they, they've come out and said that, like, it's been like that for like at least the last six months. AI is their number one business. Um, do they would would it make sense for them to have profit margins? Because that's what it's all about. See, this is the investment talk. This is where margins matter. Would it make sense for them to say we're better off not really focusing on hardware? Do we get higher margins from just putting all of our money in AI and you worry well, about the hardware your fucking self? I mean, maybe I don't know. If you do that, if they do that, then it it. Like right now, they're they're becoming a household name. Like people mm -hmm. know, you know, it's not like you can just walk up to anybody on the stream and be like talking about Nvidia and they know what it is. But it, you know, more than it used to be anyway. And like, just for that reason alone, just to be a household name, I think you know, just to have their name and people. I wouldn't be upset. Graphics cards. See, this is different from games. This is about hardware capabilities and acceleration. I wouldn't be upset. 
if in the future, if graphic cards just hit a wall where they don't go over like five, seven hundred dollars. But most of the acceleration is coming from AI cards and machine are learning. Hit a wall of how large they are. Look at what the, mm-hmm. the you know the four, the forty ninety is like insane. It's massive. Yeah, it's too, yeah, that, yeah that's I think yeah. that's the wall is we're getting too big. We're getting to the point where you like you're gonna have a computer sitting next to your computer. It's inside of a computer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be upset. Really, they just over engineered those uh, coolers. You know, that's why they're so big. Yeah. Because they were thinking it's going to be uh, much more harder than it was in the end. Right, right. It was all those fans and cooling system. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I personally would not mind a graphics card like capping off at five, seven hundred dollars, and then the rest of it is 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 powered by AI and machine learning. Oh, and then sure. I, you know what I mean? I wouldn't mind that. So that if that's yeah, their have proposal, have extremely fast internet. But yeah. So instead of like every three years, I gotta buy a new graphics card. Like if I'm if I'm good, yeah. And then you you know you instead want me to be part of your AI your AI machine learning process. I mean you know service that I don't mind. And and then that service includes you know geforce now and you know being able to do fucking ai i mean not ai but um you know rendering and shit myself you know i don't care i don't care now i don't mind a service like that for you know compute capabilities but like for games i, I don't think it works for games and when I say it don't work for games, I mean in like a subscription service like that has games in it. I don't think it works for, you know, high power AAA games. But if you're just giving me high power AAA capabilities and you want to charge me like $20 like you do for GeForce Now, but now you want to include just compute power altogether, I'm, I'm with that shit. And, and then, you know, I, all it requires for me is how powerful it computes is based upon the the card that I got that gets no more expensive than maybe five hundred dollars because you're doing most of the work through AI machine learning. It's hit you know it's it's hit my it's being streamed or whatever you know the AI machine learning it's taken from the cloud and all that shit. I, no, I would love that. That'd be fucking awesome, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, it, to it it. No matter how you talk, it just seems like all of it's headed to being in the cloud mm. eventually. But I still think we're like a, in the future. We're like a decade away from that. But <laughs> I, I would say we're a decade away, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's shorter because NVIDIA is killing it <laughs> on the AI scene. Like their stock evaluation and shit has oh, significantly insane. grown. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, the, they're the tip of the spear now. Yep. But uh, yeah, guys, uh, I gotta take off because I got a okay. call that's about to. Happen. Yeah, and I gotta uh, work on some other shit. Like we're working on some. I, I won't say nothing yet. There's some surprises coming. Um, but I'm gonna go uh, check out Lofi. He's gonna bring back Cloudy Thought soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I and, am. And Lofi, yes, I am. Put your, you know, and it's gonna be on the the main channel, Geeks. We'll talk about that yeah. when we get a chance. Put put your, put a link to your channel in the chat if you can before that's, that's you go. Call me thoughts. The foamy thoughts, no, 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 no. Oh yeah, and, and foamy, foamy Friday. We're gonna have a special foamy Friday tomorrow where I'm playing Redfall. Dear Lord, y'all gotta be. And if y'all want more foamy Friday content, support the platform. Those that support, that hit that that super chat button, and you know, suggest games. We'll we'll take your suggestions and we'll tally them up. That's how we'll do. Yeah. If you if you got a foamy Friday suggestion, hit that super chat button. Just to put for foamy Friday. I want you to play this, and we're gonna tally them up, and that'll be. Oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's, I got a warning from the bot. You're gonna play. <laughs> no, you're gonna play Peppa Pig first. I thought. No, I'm, no, 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 no. Um, no, they, uh, not your mother said Redfall. Redfall first. Oh, I'm not then, a mod. I'm not a mod in your chat. You're not a mod. Hold on. Where where did where did you go? Did they, did they time you out? Yeah, they timed me out on YouTube. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? 
That's all good, dude. But uh, yeah, man, I'm only gonna be on this call for like 20 minutes. So if you wanna hit me up at like, yeah, hit me, yeah, hit me up. I'm a, I'm a. All right, uh, all right brother. I'll be back. Peace. Okay. You see, uh, same. I gotta fix that fucking night. All right. So yeah. Uh, no. We let we let not your mother pick. He he said Redfall. Um, so we're gonna do Redfall tomorrow, and we're gonna do Pepper Pig on Friday. You motherfuckers. So hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> oh shit. All right, all right, y'all. I'm out of here. Uh, and uh, we will. Uh, are you gonna? Well, well, we'll talk about if 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 Cold Blood. Make sure you're part of the Discord. Please make sure you're part of Discord. Discord is in the description. If you're part of the Discord, you will know when we go, uh, if Cold Blood is going live. All right, with that said, appreciate all y'all. Till next time, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.